And a very good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Pete Shepard Show here live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio. This is indeed the Riptide Media Network. How's everybody doing? It's Final Four time, everybody. Men and women, the ladies first, right? Friday night, a couple of big ones. We're going to break it all out for you on the Pete Shepard Show. Oh, how's everybody doing today on this Friday? It's already April 5th in the year 2024. Hope everybody had a great night and looking forward to Friday. Man, I got a big, huge, gigantic show lined up for you uh, today here on the Pete Shepard Show at Riptide Media Network. Uh, Jeff Defoe DeForest is going to join me, the one and only, at the bottom of the hour at 7.30. Patrick Gilroy, who's been snowed in uh, up in uh, uh, northern New England with wet, heavy snow, lost power, actually told me last night he may have to go to a hotel, but he's going to try to come on at 8.05 this morning, Eastern Time. Sports business guru Rick Horror will join me at 8.30. Lots to discuss there. My good friend John Ryder, who I hired way back in the day, and he's uh, you hear him on ESPN Radio doing Sports Center updates. And then at 9.30, he's down at 9.05. Gabe Morenci, Sports Rage, one of the best handicappers and funniest men in the country coming up at 9.30 in the morning. How is everybody doing? Man, as always, uh, the phone number here to text me is 727-858-6650. You can call in at 781-418-0142. That is the number to call in if you so choose. And don't forget the video platform that we are all on here at the network. It is... Oh, my bad. It is... uh, 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 Follow me on Twitter X... At P Shep 326, my Facebook page, as well as Broad Street South Facebook and YouTube pages, uh, the Pete Shepherd Show, obviously 7 to 10 a.m. And on my Facebook page, uh, as well, is a link that Angel had put up yesterday. And uh, it goes right to uh, his sports rate of 102.9. Uh, if you want to, if you you know want to listen on on uh, some sort of an app and everything else, lots of big things happening here at Riptide Media Network. We there's going to be a new app as well, new web page and everything else. It might even be done by the end of the day. Uh, if not, it'll be done by Monday. Lots, lots going on. But any any text you have on the video platform, I am here, so I will see them. It doesn't matter where they are. Bob checking in says, "Love John Ryder." Yep, John is a John's a great guy. I haven't seen John. In like 20 years, Uh, but really, really uh, good guy. So everybody, everybody excited about tonight's potential unbelievable matchup. Caitlin Clark versus Paige Beckers. Oh, my goodness. What a game. That's the second game tonight on ESPN, the Women's Final Four in Cleveland. Uh, Earlier, it is going to be uh, NC State versus South Carolina. A very uh, nobody's talking about South Carolina. They're only thirty-six and zero defending champions. So we'll see. Well, not defending champ, but we'll 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 uh, we'll see what happens with them. Thirty-six and zero. UConn thirty-five and three. I mean, uh, excuse me. UConn is thirty-three and five. Iowa's thirty-three and four. And that should be a great matchup with Clark and Beckers tonight. NC State thirty-one and six. South Carolina, as I said, thirty-six and zero. Man, oh man, oh man! This is a, this is going to be a great day. We're going to do a rundown as well, a little bit later on, with uh, from the NBA and the uh, NHL, NIT championship last night. Anybody watch it? But me, no. A lot of people did. It was an unbelievable finish last night. Uh, an, an absolute unbelievable finish. Let me just cue up some sound here, uh, in case you missed it. And what was really cool about it as well, because this place, uh, the game took place at, you know, NIT championship for years and the final four for years used to be at, uh, uh, at Madison Square Garden. But now it's at Butler University's Hinkle Fieldhouse. And you all remember what happened at Hinkle Fieldhouse, right? You know what that's all about, don't you? Sure you do. Sure you do. That's right. 
before the game last night, Maris Valanis. You know him better as Jimmy Chitwood. I'll make it. He was there last night. Wayne Shenick, who played Ollie McClellan, he was there, you know? Buddy put Buddy under, put Ollie on the shoulders to measure the rim. And I believe uh, Kent Pole, Kent Pole was there as well. He played Merle. Swinging around in the picket fence. What a night last night at Hinkle Fieldhouse on the campus of Butler University. Unbelievable. The Indianapolis native with a here comes Swope. He's got it. Tries to launch at the three. There's no call. He gets his block by Bediaco. It's tapped around. There's still two seconds to go. It's gone away for the win. No! And Seton Hall wins the 2024 NIT Championship. How about that last night? I could not believe what I was watching towards the end. Seton Hall, I mean, uh, uh, the Sycamores of Indiana State, were up 77-70 with like 90 seconds to go. And they, for some reason, just started shooting threes. That's all they did was shoot threes. And the Seton Hall came back and scored the last nine points right there. And Alameda Dawes led the Pirates with 24. Uh, Kadari Richmond at 21 and 13. And their fifth straight win at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. How about that? The Seton Hall Pirates. Unbelievable Unbelievable finish last night. Uh, unbelievable finish last night. Meanwhile, as always, any comments on that? I, I just, I, I don't, I don't know how they just, they just started shooting threes, and uh, they were favored by three and a half or four points, depending on what you got. Meaning Indiana, three chances to win in the final eight point four seconds as well. Uh, Ryan Conwell blocked two threes. And then the desperation one from 35 feet came up short. But that was uh, that was an exciting game. Good crowd as well over at uh, in Butler. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to uh, a little. Um, do, 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 do. No, okay. Uh, I do want to. I would. I want to mention because uh, we're gonna. The show is jam packed today, so I want to get in as uh, much as possible. So let's do a uh, let's do a little rundown of uh, the NBA and the NHL. No, no, welcome. And Angel Martinez is on here. Well, you know what? Let's just say good morning to Angel. He's already he's already up. He's up and running. He's up and kicking. My God. Angel, what's up, buddy? What's happening, Pete? As uh, <laughs> We got some early folks here with uh, Bob saying he loves John Ryder and Hoosiers yep. and Tiara's mom. Happy Friday, Pete. Fabulous yep. T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a hug it out. Bruin, you know, it's a swing. Linus... Um, uh, uh, Sw Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark, the uh, Linus Olmark, the two goalies for the Bruins, were still together and doing well. And, and, and speaking of that, it was a great win last night for the Bees on the road against a very tough Carolina team. But uh, let's start, shall we, with the uh, NBA? Do a quick rundown here, and major, uh, we'll do NBA, NHL, MLB rundown. So much going on. Some NFL news to tell you about as well. But all right, let's let's start with the NBA rundown. <laughs> American Airlines Center in Dallas. And indeed, it was the Mavericks beating up on the Hawks 109 to 95. Maybe the ugliest fourth quarter of basketball you'd ever want to see. 16 to 14, the Mavericks outscore the Hawks. Really awful. Kyrie Irving had 26, 5, and 1. 26 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist for the Mavericks. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia 76ers up by 10. At the end of the first quarter, they hang on and hold off the Heat in Miami, 109 to 105. Maxi, 37 points, nine rebounds, and 11 assists. Also in that game, Joel Embiid had 29 points, 
four rebounds and three assists. He played 32 minutes, so he's looking like he haven't really missed a beat. I wasn't sure how much long, how long it would take him to get back into basketball shape, but uh, the Sixers, yes, he is, 42 and 35. Meanwhile, the Knicks beat the Kings 120 to 109 at Madison Square Garden. Brunson, 35 points, two rebounds, and 11 assists. But the big story for the New York Knicks, Angel. This was this was this was unbelievable that that happened yesterday before the game. They lose arguably their best player, and people were crying as Julius Randle is out for the season for the Knicks. Oh boy, that's a huge loss. That is absolutely devastating. That is the equivalent of their Aaron Rodgers. I mean, uh, for the Jets, and I hate to see it because. I want when I'm, when my team plays anybody, it doesn't matter what sport. I like people at their best, so there's no excuses. But that's a huge blow for the New York Knicks. In fact, Stephen A. was just about crying yesterday during his show or during first take. He actually, I think he teared up, and it was kind of, it was kind of funny how they how they played it up. They were playing taps for the Knicks and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the Warriors are red hot. They won a season high six in a row. They beat the Rockets, who I believe lost four in a row now, 133 to 110. Steph Curry, 29 points, six rebounds, and six assists. So the Rockets hanging on, uh, the uh, Warriors hanging on to that 10th spot. Rockets are like, what, three games behind now. And then the Nuggets and the Clippers had a great one last night at Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. Jokic had a chance to win it at the buzzer, Angel, but did not. He finished with 36, 17, and 10, another triple double. Paul George, though, 28 points, four rebounds, and two assists. Clippers win 102 to 100. So there is uh, your NBA recap. But the thing, the big story is Julius Randle, Angel, being gone uh, for the year with that shoulder injury. Just uh, devastating news. It, it, kind of, it happened right after we got off the show yesterday. Jeez, so right after we got off the show. That's bad because you figure the playoff push is coming so shortly that it, that's going to devastate the Knicks for sure. No doubt about it. Ab- no, no doubt about it. Uh, let me see. Let me get my other scores up here so we can do a, a NHL rundown as well. Here. Uh, Got to have my music, Angel. So there we go. Last night in the National Hockey League, Bruins jumped out to a 3 0 lead in the first period against the Hurricanes and then beat them 4 1. Outstanding. David Pasternak with a goal and an assist. Uh, hiding with a goal and an assist. And I know that. Uh, Everybody's favorite player, Brad Marchand, <laughs> uh, scored. And he had his 400th goal of his career last night. Bruins went 4-1. to one. Panthers got back on track, and they blasted the Ottawa Senators by a score of 6 nothing. Bobrovsky had the shutout with 30 saves in net. Kuchuk with a goal and two assists. Reinhardt had a goal and an assist as well for the Florida Panthers. The New York Islanders doubled up the Columbus Blue Jackets, 4-2 at Nationwide Arena, Columbus, Ohio. Dobson had a goal for the Islanders. Also, uh, Barzal had two assists there. Uh, the Penguins beat the Capitals by a score of 4-1. Ovechkin had the lone goal for the Washington Capitals. Surprise, surprise. Joseph had a goal uh, for the Penguins. The Tampa Bay Lightning continue to roll. They beat up on the Montreal Canadiens 7 to 4. That was at the Bell Center in Montreal. Paul had a couple of goals for Tampa Bay. Kucherov a goal and two assists. What else is new? Lightning win 7 to 4. The Winnipeg Jets at home at Canada Life Center beat up on the Calgary Flames by a score of 5 to 2. Velarde with the hat trick. That's three goals to you and me. Morrissey had a couple of assists as well for the Jets. The Avalanche over the Wild by a score of 5-2. MVP candidate McKinnon with a goal and two assists. Strowan had two goals as well, plus an assist. The Nashville Predators got back on track after being blanked by the Bruins the other night. They beat the Blues at home 6-3. Forsberg had a couple of goals and an assist. Saros and Net with 44 stops. And finally, the LA Kings went to San Jose at the Sap Center because the Sharks play like Saps and blanked them 2-0. Riddich had, get this, Angel, We could. they didn't even need a goalie. 15 saves last night. 15, that's it, in the shutout. Doesn't get any Jeez. easier than that. Kemp with the goal. Kemp with the goal and uh, and Costum with the goal as well. That is uh, So there is your uh, NHL uh, and NBA rundown. 
Man, oh, man. It's Friday already. Friday already. Uh, you're going to be watching some Final Four tonight? Oh, yeah. I can't wait for it because this should be probably – I, it, it's got to be towards the final four here, but I think as far as we're for the women, it has to be probably one of the bigger. I mean, you had what twelve point three million last weekend. This game will for, beat it. Yeah. This game will beat it. The, the second game will beat it tonight. Absolutely, uh, Alabama. Uh, the the UConn to Iowa game, Clark versus Beckers. It's 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 almost like it's almost Magic Bird esque in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. So I, I'm dying to see it. I think you know it, it's. What's the uh, the thing on Sunday with football? You know, everybody waits for a Sunday night. Now it's going oh, to be yeah. everybody's waiting for Friday night. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I did want to do a uh, I wanted to do a baseball rundown as well while we are here. Um, we're in a lot of well, there were some interesting games. Yeah, how about the Mets? They finally got on board. They finally got on board and won. I'm trying to find a good baseball song to play. There was, uh, the guy out there in I think he was either in left center or center field had this. Big furry coat. Mind you, it was raining out there in the Northeast, but humongous fur coat with sunglasses. Yeah. And he's kind of like shaking back and forth in the stands to try and get the voodoo away from the Mets. And then maybe it worked because <laughs> they finally got one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do an, uh, let's do an MLB rundown uh, real quick here while we have time because uh, we're busy, busy, busy today. I'm loaded with, uh, with uh, five guests today. That's an all-time Pete Shepard uh, record, five guests, because Defoe's only going to be on for, like, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. He's busy, busy. He's a busy man. But he's going to be on with me on Monday for an hour, so 9 to 10, uh, coming up here on the Pete Shepard Show on the awesome Riptide uh, Media Network. All right, let's let's uh, let's get to it as soon as I punch up all these scores here. One of the great, one of the great baseball videos uh, of all time. All right, let's begin yesterday. Doubleheader time. <laughs> the Mets lost the initial game 6-3 to three to the Tigers at City Field and Flushing. By the way, there was hardly anybody there for the second game. It looked like the Oakland A's and uh, the Almeida Coliseum. We'll get to that in a second. Tigers win the first game 6-3. to three. Um, Miller, two innings pitch with four Ks, a couple of balls based on balls. Uh, Pirates continue to win. They're 6-1 over the Nationals. They beat them 7-4 uh, to four there. The Guardians doubled up the Twins by a score of four to two in Minneapolis. Twins fall to three and three. Guardians are now six and two. The Cardinals over the Marlins eight to five. The Marlins continue to play perfect baseball. Angel at zero and eight. Can they get to the Bo Derek number of ten? I say yes. Horrible start for the Marlins, obviously. Yeah. Uh, later on in, in, in game number two, the Mets were getting no hit until like the eighth inning. They were down one nothing, but they rallied and beat the Tigers two to one in front of a few people at City Field, and uh, they improved to one and five, which pleases me. Uh, the Tigers are five and one. Uh, that was their first loss of the year. So the Tigers and the Pirates, surprising, you know, right out of the gate. Royals clobbered the White Sox by a score of ten to one at the Coffin Stadium in Kansas City, and there it is. And there is your uh, there is your baseball. Rundown recap uh, for the day uh, from from last night, but the, the big story of the day obviously is is uh, the women's final four. The men's final four is tomorrow night. Uh, the women again final four tonight. Sunday will be the championship game at three o'clock on ABC. The men's final four, number eleven NC State with a record of twenty six and fourteen. The Cinderella versus number one Purdue, 33-4. and four. By the way, Purdue is favored by 9.5. The total is 146.5. That game is tomorrow night on TBS. And then number four Alabama, 25-11 and 11 on the year uh, versus number one powerhouse UConn. They're 35-3. and three. How'd they ever lose three? Minus 11.5. The Huskies are favored. Total 160.5. And, a half. and uh, that is 849 approximately on uh, TBS. So th this is about as exciting a men and women's final four as it gets. Plus you got for the first time, two schools with the men and women, both in the final four, which is really, really cool. It is very difficult to do NC state and UConn men and women's teams in the final four. Could man, it, oh man. What was the, uh, what did we say last, last week? It was like 2014. I know it's been some years since both the men and women of UConn have done it back. The only school, matter of fact, since doing it back to back, as far as in the same season, not back to back championships, but meaning you know both of them getting to the final four and into to the championship and winning it all. So we have to 
I guess we have to wait and see first tonight before we can say if they're both back in the finals in the same year. Yeah, I, I, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I like I like UConn tonight. I think it's going to be a hell of a game. It's going to be a hell of a game, and uh, it, it's. But I'm taking the Huskies. I'm, I'm going to take Gino Ariema in this situation here. I'll, I'll take the plus two and a half. It's, it's two and a half. Uh, the Lady Huskies are, fa- are underdogs by two and a half. Iowa, Caitlin Clark favored by two and a half and the total 162 and a half. So it's almost like a pick game. But I will take my chances and go with a Gino Ariema and, and the, uh, well, and the Lady Huskies. The, tonight. You know what the next magical question is going to end up being is that the minute, let's just say that, that Gino and UConn make it to the finals. You know, somewhere in between there, someone's going to say, Gino, if you win it all, are you finally walking away? Yeah, and that's that's a good, actually a good point. And I ask him that a lot, but, uh, you know. I, but it's getting close. He's still, it's getting, it's getting close, but he still seems to, uh, he seems to have the passion to stick around. I don't know. It depends. Uh, if they do win it, maybe, maybe there's a good chance that he does step down, but. I'm going to lean like 70%, 30% that he stays. Right. It might be, you know, it might have all depended. I mean, if he ever lost a championship game with a buzzer or something like that, I and mean, if he, you know, I don't expect him to win two games by double digits or anything uh, remotely like that, but you never, you, you, I think the passion is, is still there. The passion is still there, but maybe he's just, you know, he's tired. I mean, the guy's been there forever, absolutely forever. And, <clears throat> Excuse me. And those ba- those battles he used to have inside of Stores, Connecticut. And I'm talking about him back in the day versus Jim Calhoun. I always said, man, I would love to watch a pay per view fight with those two, because the stories that used to come out of there about I don't think they get along all that well. Things may have changed now that you know Jim has been retired, but I heard some stories back in the day which I won't repeat. But uh, there was uh, there was there was friction angel between Gino Ariema and Jim Calhoun, and this program is better. My program is better than your program. And if it wasn't for the girls, you wouldn't have the guys. Blah blah. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of ego centric, you know nonsense. So we shall see. Hey, how about this real quick? Want to play this before we cut to a quick break. Kyle Van Oy returning to the Ravens on a two-year deal. And yesterday on the Pat McAfee show, they discussed it. That's uh, that's, yeah. that's that's interesting. Yep, that's that's big. I thought he might uh, actually uh, retire, but no, here it is. Signed a two-year deal with the Baltimore Ravens. He's nice. back. Yeah. He's All back. Right. Keith. Baby Keith. Good boy, Keith. Here we go, Keith. Last year, we got a chance to chat with KVN uh, a few times, both before he was signed. To- no, that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, it was quick. I got cut out. <laughs> I got cut off. Darn it. <laughs> Hang on, give me ten, give me ten seconds to reload here, and then uh, we'll we'll hear it, hear the reaction on the uh, on the Pat McAfee show from yesterday. Yeah, Pat heard and cut it off. Yeah, Van Noy has signed a two year deal with the Baltimore Ravens. He's nice. back. Yeah. He's All back. Right. He's the baby Keith. Oh, boy, Keith. Here we go, Keith. Last year we got a chance to chat with KVN uh, a few times, both before he was signed to a team and then after he was signed to the Baltimore Ravens. He seemingly loved the culture, loved the team, loved everything about being a Raven quickly. Now he will have another two years as doing as such. He had a great season for them. I think he made a lot of big plays late too, which I think a lot of Ravens fans, you know, kind of got endeared to the the Mormon monster. Hell yeah. yeah. Kyle Van Noy. And uh, we'd like to say congrats, Kyle. Keep it going, baby. Go, Kyle. He deserves it. We like Kyle. Kyle. I like Kyle. Love, Love Kyle. Kyle's the man. Great personality. Still a great he's player, too. So good for him, too, getting a two-year deal. And he enjoys, like, um, like giving back to the game, I think. Like, in the locker room, a big part of it. Cal, see, uh, Eric, watch the video, Eric Cartman. You can see uh, I'm Pat, right in front of Pat is Eric Cartman from South Park. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle Van Noy is going to be one of my favorite players. And the Patriots stole him away from Detroit. He was an integral part of some uh, great teams that the Patriots had. Then he went to Miami and did very well over there. And I thought Baltimore was the uh, perfect fit for him. Uh, and so he's, uh, he's sticking around. So that's good. That's good. All right, Angel, here's what we're going to do. It's uh, already that time. going to take a quick break here, and then uh, you're certainly welcome to hang, uh, whatever you want to do. It's your call. Jeff DeForest, Jeff Tipo DeForest is going to join me up early. Does he think he's having cream of wheat this morning? What do you think he's eating for breakfast? Coffee. Cream. I'm cream. kidding. I, I'm I, hate, I hate cream of wheat, by the way. Hate it. I wonder Absolutely. if it's crackers and, uh, crackers and coffee. 
crackers and coffee. It must be Graham Graham crackers though, right? Graham Good crackers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. Let me find a good song to get out of here. Well, okay, all right, we'll do we'll do this. Take a quick break, and when we come back, hit it. I did hit it. Okay, when we come back, uh, it is Jeff Depot DeForest joining me on the Pete Shepherd Show. We're here live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide <laughs> Network. Angel Martinez in the house as well. We're grooving and moving and, and walking in the sun. Ain't no joke. I like to buy the world a token. Teach the world to sing its perfect harmony. And teach the world to snuff the fires and the lawyers. They all know it's just a song of this spot for the recipe. This is your love attack. I know when our body's is back. It's just like any fat. It retracts before and back. And just like fashion. It's a passion for the wizard and him If you got the goods, they'll come in by it Just to stay in the click So don't delay Act now, surprise and run out And now we don't scare the lot Since two and years to arrive And if we follow the name We have to all about it We have to shine We might as well be walking on the sun <laughs> Years ago, they spoke out and they broke out of recession and oppression and together they took and they poked out with guitars around the bonfire just singing and clapping, man, what the hell happened? That someone spell out, some were held, found some they fell down and some got back up and far back as the meltdown. And their kids were hippie chicks, so hypocrites because fashion is smash on the true meaning of so don't you make act now, surprise and run it out And now we don't spend the lot, since two and years to arrive And if you follow the man, we have to all about it We have to shine, we might as well be walking on the sun And I'm almost handkerchief is soaked With the tears because the baby's life has been revoked The bond is broke, got such a cup and foe This all my clothes, I've missed all wheels, I can't reform No God, I call this focus, no don't sit back Kick back and watch the world get bushwhacked Use that in your neighborhood It's under attack, put away the crack before the crack Put you away, you need to be there when your baby's old enough to be late. So don't you make act now, supplies are running out. And now we go scared a lot, since two and years to arrive. And if you follow the man, we have to all about it. We have to shine, you might as well be walking on the sun. You might as well be walking on the sun. Yes, 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 yes. Walking on the sun. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome back to the Pete Shepherd Show here. It is Friday. It is April 5th. We are celebrating Friday. Happy Friday. Freeform Friday. I don't know. Freaky Friday. Whatever you want. It is Pete Shepherd Show live here at the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide Media Network. Lots of huge things happening here, Angel. You're a big part of it, obviously, as are a whole bunch of uh, other people. This is going to be uh, fantastic. Jeff D. DeForest is going to join me in uh, in just a um, well. It could be any time now. It could be any time. He'll be joining us on the video stream as well. Make sure you follow us. Um, follow uh, on Twitter. Follow me at pshep three two six. You can uh, also follow me on my Facebook page and Broad Street South Facebook page and the Broad Street South YouTube pages uh, as well. And Andrew, you have the, I put that link on my Facebook page as well uh, to your. To your 102.9. Uh, the game? Yep. Sports the station. Sports radio. Correct? Yep. Sports radio 102.9. The game. Yes. The link is. Hang on, Angel. My bad. Hang on. You were muted. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sports radio 102.9. The game. It's up there. I also put it back out this morning on my Twitter handle. So if you guys are on the go, 
You can listen, download the app, and uh, don't miss the lineup of shows that are coming up here very, very shortly. Yes, we'll have a, an announcement either later today or Monday morning, and lots and lots of stuff uh, going on here. Uh, Brian Bruno, president of Naples Wealth Planning, his partner Rick Calhoun, an amazing, amazing job of uh, uh, putting all this together at this at this beautiful studio here where I get to broadcast out of in North Naples. And, of course, uh, Angel has a beautiful studio himself in Tampa yeah. at his home where people walk by and knock on your window. They sure do. And this morning, <laughs> uh, it, I had it open just a little bit earlier, the window, and it was uh, the early morning walkers. Um, they were <laughs> waving by, so... Yeah, it's fun. I got to send, uh, apparently, Defoe will send me a message, so I got to send them something back here real quick. Oh, okay. Do what, you, do, do, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Uh, the Oakland A's, uh, I'm going to play this right gonna, in a second here. Uh, John Fisher, the owner of the pathetic Oakland A's. And I don't know if anybody heard this story yesterday, but they're, they're going to end their 56-year tenure in the East Bay at Oakland Alameda Coliseum. And they're going to be leaving and go play in Sacramento at a minor league ballpark that averages more fans than they do, believe it or not, before making the move uh, to Vegas. So here is here is the owner of the uh, Oakland A's, uh, John Fisher, uh, talking about it. Good to be here for the next three years, playing in this uh, beautiful ballpark, uh, but also being able to be able to watch um, some of the greatest players in baseball. Uh, whether they be athletics players or Aaron Judge and others, uh, launch home runs out of this very intimate, the most intimate ballpark in all of Major League Baseball for the next three years. Ooh, I'd be going. <laughs> and we're looking forward to this being our home uh, until we move on to uh, to our stadium in Las Vegas in 2028. Doesn't even mention any of his A's players. He mentions freaking Aaron Boone and others hitting homer. Yeah, Aaron Boone. Come see the A's get clobbered as Aaron Boone, Mike Trout, and Mookie Betts go yard for my pathetic team. Why do I own this team? Because I can. The Greenwood Sacramento three-year lease with a team option for a fourth season in case the team's ballpark in Vegas doesn't get built on time. They'll share Sutter Health Park, which holds uh, roughly 14,000 people, which is about 13,400 more than they need to for an A's game. If you're lucky to get 500 people there. Uh, they're going to share it with the Sacramento River Cats. That's the San Francisco Giants AAA farm team. Hey, maybe they can get some signals when they play San Francisco. And the uh, team president, uh, Dave Caval, called Oakland Chief of Staff, Lee Hansen at 7.36 in the morning to inform her of the team's decision. Owner John Fisher followed five minutes later with a call to Oakland Mayor Shang Tao, and the team announced its move on social media 10 minutes after that. Now, here's an interesting number for you that I found today, Angel, for this. This is so pathetic. The Rivercats on Sunday posted a higher attendance than the A's did in Oakland. Oakland's attendance on Sunday was 4,118, which is absolute bullshit. If, if, they, if, they, if, there, if there were 2,000 people there, I'd be stunned, and I think it was less than that. But in Sacramento, the Rivercats' attendance, looking just looking at the stadium, 4,904 at their stadium. They, they average more people. There was a room. There, there was a – there was some uh, – there was a thought a couple of years ago that they might move to Sacramento, the Oakland days instead of going, but then the Vegas thing came up and I guess, but that doesn't matter unless, I mean, I don't know what this guy Fisher's doing. I really don't. Nobody can name one player on the Oakland days. And, uh, and I'm proud to say I can't, I don't, I don't can't, and I, nor do I care. I know my Red Sox beat up on them, but who doesn't? I mean, it really is. It's a sad state of affairs. This once proud franchise and the way they have just gone down the freaking toilet because this owner doesn't care. The fans, I give the fans all the credit in the world for like partying in the parking lot, not going to the games, most of them anyway. And this team is one in six. They're awful. They're negative 29 already and run differential. They stink, Angel. Stink. That they do. <laughs> that they definitely do. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, what I want to know is that why, what is the deal that he apparently he, I'm assuming, I don't want to use the word hate, but the dislike so much for Oakland, where he had to make this move. 
Well, because the A's in Oakland, they've been trying to, to get that uh, stadium redone for years. I mean, there's cats that are running around in there, and the the A's in the city of Oakland, I guess, to answer, had their final negotiating meeting earlier this week on Tuesday at the team's offices. Oakland's reps presented a five-year lease offer with a team opt-out after three. I'm all choked up. And in that offer, the team would have been, been the team would have been responsible for a 97 million extension fee that would have been due in full, even if the team chose to opt out. The A's currently pay 1.25 million per season to rent the Coliseum, and the increased cost to play at the Coliseum was the main sticking point in the negotiations. So five years. And they were responsible for ninety-seven million. Ninety-seven million is double their payroll. They're not going to pay ninety-seven million. Exactly. So, in the hours after that meeting, Oakland officials reached out to the A's with a revised offer, a previously unreported three-year lease, and a sixty million dollar extension fee, down from ninety-seven. That offer was contingent on Major League Baseball agreeing to a one-year exclusive right to solicit ownership for a future expansion team in Oakland, and. Apparently, A's were receptive to the new offer, but the team met with Sacramento officials less than 24 hours later and quickly agreed uh, to the deal. Uh, Mayor Tao said in a statement, Oakland offered a deal that was fair to the A's and was fiscally responsible for our city. We wish the A's the best and will continue our conversations with them on facilitating the sale of the share of the Coliseum site. The city of Oakland will now focus on advancing redevelopment efforts at the Coliseum, something they should have done a long, long time ago. It is probably the best pitcher's park in Major League Baseball, foul territory that is like, you know, the size of New England, parts of it is crazy. Stuff like that. With Defo, because for some reason there's there seems to be a little bit of a technical issue, so I'm oh. trying to make sure that he can get in. Oh, okay. If not, he can call in, but I mean, it's up to you. I know he's only got... He's only got a few minutes today, right, um, with us. Yep. By the way, Fisher owns half of the Oakland Coliseum property, and he has not attended a game since Cabal called Tao on April 19th of last year. <laughs> to inform her of an agreement to move the team to Vegas. A sale of the team's portion of the Coliseum site was also a requirement of Oakland's offer, but now the team could conceivably hold on to the property and block any future development on the site. What a, what a mess. By the way, the A's will require approval from the Major League Baseball Players Association to play in a minor league park. Caval says that MLB is working on the approval and that the A's will be announcing changes to the ballpark for both players and fans. <laughs> Let's make those fences a little bit longer. Exactly. Um, an MLBPA spokesperson told Jeff Passan that uh, the MLBPA has had preliminary discussions with MLB about a range of issues related to a temporary relocation. We expect those discussions to continue. One in six A's off to a start. They draw an average of 6,438 fans, which is all garbage because there's barely 600 fans there at that game. Um, a number that figures to drop even lower with the team cutting all ties to the East Bay. The team has a payroll of roughly $60 million, by far the lowest of the 30 big league teams. $25 million below the next lowest team. That's the Pittsburgh Pirates. Unbelievable. Fans dubbed this the summer boycott, which began on opening day when thousands of fans protested Fisher's ownership by going to the game that night, but remaining in the parking lot throughout. <laughs> Just an all-night tailgate to bash your team. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Uh, meanwhile, let's see. What else do I have? I do have an Adam, Sch uh, Adam Schefter, an, an amendment. Yesterday, as part of their blockbuster trade to acquire wide receiver Stephon Diggs, the Texans also wiped out the final three years of his contract so he can become a free agent after this season. What God, he's just he's just living the life. But here's Adam Schefter to tell you uh, more about it. What more can you tell us? Well, Laura, as part of this deal, Houston essentially tore up the last three years of Stephon Diggs' contract, giving him the ability to leave after this season and become a free agent to negotiate yet another long-term deal like the one he got in Minnesota, like the one he got in Buffalo. And now Diggs will be free to leave after this season. And think about it from Houston's standpoint. It got back, in addition to Stephon Diggs, 
two draft picks, one this year, one next year. And if he leaves this year, now they would be in position to get a compensatory draft pick. So they would get yet another draft pick back. And here's the bottom line. It puts Stephon Diggs in position to have a great season this year. He's incentivized to have one of his best years to become a free agent yet again, to be the best version of himself on and off the field. But we knew about the trade to get him there. Now there's another added component to it, a rework deal for Stephon Diggs in which both sides really gain something here. The Mm. Texans get the best version of Diggs and Diggs gets the ability to become a free agent. Yeah, no question. It's it's and like I said yesterday, CJ Stroud earlier this week doing backflips. You got not only do you get Diggs, you get you got Joe Mixon, you got Nico Collins, you got Tank Dell, and Dalton Schultz, a really good tight end. Now the question is, Angel, is what Stephon Diggs? What which which diva are we going to get? Are we going to get diva one or diva two? Diva one is going to be the one that gets upset if he doesn't get to a thousand yards this year. Diva two is he's going to play nicely, and who cares if I make four catches a game or twenty four catches in a game as long as we win and you know compete for a Super Bowl or at least an AFC Championship game, which I do believe that Houston will do. That's the whole thing. Whenever you talk about wide receivers, biggest diva athletes on the planet, Angel. Yep. Not like you. No, not at all. Humble. Humble. Yeah. Not, and not like your arena football team, the Orlando Predators, which you will be doing the play-by-play voice in Spanish coming up. I can't yes. wait to play those cuts. All right, it's going to be fun. I can't wait either because you guys are going to hear a version of Spanglish. And it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. All right. And uh, I love doing this. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. okay so um, let's see. What sound effects can I put? Well, uh, pretend that um, pretend it's uh, first and goal from the 10-yard line. And C.J. Stroud is going to drop back to pass and throw a touchdown pass to Stefan Diggs. How would that sound in Spanish? Oh, uh, all right. See if I can remember. C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud. Yeah, C.J. Stroud. Yeah, first and ten at that. Uh, first and goal at the ten. Okay. Uh, aquí estamos. El juego puede ser ahora mismo que pueden ganar los Texans aquí en este momento. C.J. Stroud en la línea de la diez. Stefan Diggs corriendo la mano derecha. Y ahí va Stefan Diggs. La bola está en aire. Ahí está. Touchdown, Stefan Diggs. Aquí vamos con los Texans. Y ahora están adelante 14 a 7. Casi llegando al final del juego. So, yeah. It was oh, that's, that, no, it's, it's a... Impressive. Most impressive. That, that is great. Now, will you have a... Will, 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 do you, do you, will you have a signature call? I'm I'm thinking about that one. I, I gotta I gotta <laughs> think about that one because <laughs> I'll give one to you. My good friend John Mediaprell, you hear him right? All you hear him yeah. all every week here. Yeah. So when he's doing BC football, his signature call at the end, and and particularly um, when Matty Ice was there, would be take a bow. That's a signal. Take a bow. Nice. Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I could absolutely see you coming up with the uh, a signature call for any Orlando Predator uh, touchdown. Good stuff. That's right. right. Uh, it, Devo's, we've been going back and forth here with Devo. And uh, oh. yeah, he was having, apparently there's a, a, a bit of an issue of him trying to get in. So I I, I tried hmm. thing after thing. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wait, there he wait, is. Wait, wait. He's done it. Wait. He's in. <laughs> I told just a little patience. All right. Let me, uh, let me squeeze. Uh, he's going to kill me. Yep. It's. <laughs> Defo, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, UConn, UConn women yeah, tonight, Defo. UConn women tonight, plus two and a half, baby. Jump all over it. Well, you know, it's hard to count Gino Ariema out of anything, right? Uh, he, he's yeah. being largely overlooked in the field of coaches that are left in the tournament. But, uh, yeah, I, I might be uh, tempted to take that, except for the fact that you see the news, uh, Pete and, and Angel. Tim Donaghy will be officiating tonight. <laughs> oh, jeez. There is no way they're going to let uh, Caitlin Clark not make it to the final championship game. It's not happening, my friend. So, uh, regardless, maybe UConn can be within two and a half, but there's no way they're going to let him win the game. They're going to call two technicals on Geno if he's winning by a point and send <laughs> Caitlin Clark to the line for two free throws after the arena is already emptied out. They will declare 
the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes the winner. Uh, unfortunately, I got to run, guys. I mean, uh, okay. you guys look great, by the way. Uh, yeah. It, it uh, Thanks, took man. me 10 so, minutes look, to log in, though. Uh, that's fine. I know. I know you got stuff to do, places to go. Default. Great. Great having you on for these sixty seconds. Sixty seconds with default, but you're going to join me for sixty minutes on Monday, right? <laughs> yes, I will. I, I should uh, be able to avoid these problems. But uh, <laughs> this was my best ever radio cameo, uh, streaming cameo in the history of my career. Fifty default, years of doing this. I will tell you this with a as a heterosexual male. After this conversation, I think I, I think it moved. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you guys have a good show uh, right, you know I, I think i could continue on this basis for a long time and uh yes. you know, the network is bound to prosper as yeah, a result. oh yeah well you're gonna be a big part of it so it's 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 great to have you enjoy your other show or shows that you do uh enjoy your weekend enjoy the final four and we'll talk to you monday at 9 a.m jeff awesome stuff all right thanks so much appreciate it <laughs> thanks <Steve -O. laughs> well it did it did. Well, <laughs> what to make it better is you in a clip for later on. <laughs> That's right. You put together a couple of great clips yesterday from the show. That's uh, I couldn't get that. We were laughing. I was, I was, you know, that that little clip, and then we 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 posted it on on Twitter yesterday. We're going to be doing a lot, a couple of two minute clips here and there. Not every, not cl not clips from every part of the show, but two or three of them a day on Twitter and on Facebook. Some really great stuff. You know, I don't know. Should we play? Should I play that again? In case yeah. you missed it, should I play that? I'm going to play that again. I'm going to play that again. And you added what I loved about it is what as you you added uh, your own personal uh, Angel Martinez touch to it with sound effects and and everything else. Can we, can we put this on video? Can we put it on video to see how uh, you know? Hang is on, that possible? Let me, yeah, let me let me switch a couple things here, and then we'll be right. able to uh, we'll be able to do so. Because you got to see this. In case you missed it, uh, it was funny enough. You know, Angel and I talking on the video platform yesterday, but then uh, after that, he did a little, did a little editing. Very, very, very funny, very, very funny stuff. In case you missed it yesterday, a classic story. We were talking about relationships early on when we were uh, young and free spirited uh, and junior high kids back in the late seventies, early eighties, and Angel came up with a gem with his. Uh, uh, I, I won't even. I won't even. <laughs> I won't even say girlfriend and potential to be. You let me know when you have it, Angel. Yep. Uh, let me take a look. Okay. I one. One other thing <laughs> that I know. I had uploaded the the one so quick though, but it, yeah, it was it was. Fun. I did get a um, two or three folks had sent out a message like. Uh, the kind of like, are you serious, Clark? How in the world could you put her in a closet? Like, I didn't lock her in a closet first of all. <laughs> Jesus, and, it's not, you're not like what's a, you're not like uh, you know the guy in you know in um, uh, Silence of the Lambs that kidnapped everybody, you know, threw him down a well. It wasn't that? You just you 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 you, you asked her. Well, well, you'll you'll hear the story in a second, and you can yeah, judge for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of and you were very exactly. thoughtful. You were very thoughtful as well, you know. I, I some of it. I yeah. Well, I try. Let's see. This might be it right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is this is from yesterday's show. Actually, it's back to you said back to 1986 for one young Angel Martinez. As I said, making uh, making it's not just about sports this show. It's about making long lasting relationships, Angel. Exactly. Well, you know, listen, it, it's back in the day. Now, you know, of course, people go nuts about it. But back in the day, you didn't know. It, I, I was, as I explained to everyone, I was a nerd. So unfortunately, I didn't know what vibes were back in the day, as is told now. So that's just the way it is. But I'll, it's almost loading, almost there. Okay. So we'll, or you can just play it off my, if it's easier, just go to my Twitter page. You can play it off that. Uh, it's coming. It's just, okay. It, it, it has its <laughs> Processing. Sure. Processing. Yep. Exactly. Processing. It is the Pete Shepard Show live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide Media Network. You can text the show at 727-858-6650. And don't forget also on the video platform. We'll see it. Go, yep. go to uh, follow me on Twitter at pshep326. My Facebook page, it's already there. And now, now on the Broad Street Facebook and YouTube pages, you can catch the show. And Pete Shepard Show is always 7 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday on the Riptide uh, Media Network. Yep. Here it Still is, processing? Folks. Okay, here we go.
We digress. I don't know how we get on this subject, but um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty. It's pretty funny. But you came into your own, obviously. Uh, it, it's somewhere along what, the high school days, right? Yeah. Well, matter of fact, now that I think about it, it was a, so there was a girl. I if I remember correctly, her name was Nancy, <laughs> and I think she went to my sister's school. But she took a liking to me. I had no idea. Like yeah. again, I just I was never okay. about it. Well, the one day she ended up stopping by um, when my before my mom moved to New England, I moved first, and then she ended up moving up there. She she came by my grandmother's house. We were on the second floor. My grandmother owned this three story building. She used to own buildings. Didn't speak a little English, but own buildings. So um, <laughs> she comes by. She stops. I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? She's like, I just you know wanted to come see no, you. I'm like, like all right. I, I thought kind of bizarre. Well, here, my grandmother must have heard her walk in, so she comes upstairs. I freaked out. I'm like, oh, no, the only person that, that's here is obviously my grandmother because she didn't go to work today. Mm -hmm. So I grab an apple oh, from happened? the kitchen, <laughs> put her in the closet, <laughs> throw the apple in there, say, here, if you're hungry, just you know, oh. eat this. And so... My are you shitting me? Are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> yeah. Did you get it back? You, threw your, you threw Nancy in the closet <laughs> with an apple? Yeah. What's the, what kind of apple? A red apple. Eddie Smith? A red <laughs> <laughs> Well, my grandma walks away after Otherwise, she, you know, she checked everything. Here. She's like, all right. Oh, I can't play the video, though. Unless yeah, you... I'll, I'll do the... Uh, I'll, I'll do the... Give me a second. I'll do the screen share, and then we'll be able to, to watch it off the one from, from Twitter. Okay. But it, every once in a while, it just... It happens. It's technology. Yeah. It's what happens. It is. It is what it is. Damn, internet. This. Okay. Here's a rare story. Let me pause it so everybody can kind of keep up with it. Hey, listen, <laughs> modern technology, when you want it to work the way it should, it happens, folks. Yeah, that's all good. It's all, it's all good. Let me take this. Throw this that, put that over there. Put this over there. That's pretty much the way it works. All right. Uh, let's see. Is it this it should be this screen right here. Yep. Share the audio. Put it up here. Shrink it down a little bit. And then hey, we'll be shrinkage. I was in a pool. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what others have said. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you weren't in a pool. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see now if this place. Pretty fun. But you came into your own, obviously. Uh it, it's somewhere along what the high school days, right? Yeah. Well, matter of fact, now that I think about it, it was a so there was a girl, I if I remember correctly, her name was Nancy. And I think she went to my sister's school. <laughs> But she took a liking to me. I had no idea. Like, yeah. again, I just I was never about it. Well, the one day she ended up stopping by um, when my, before my mom moved to New England, I moved first, and then she ended up moving up there. She she came by my grandmother's house. We were on the second floor. My grandmother owned this three-story building. She used to own buildings. Didn't speak a little English, but own buildings. So <laughs> um, she comes by. She stops. I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? She's like, I just, you know, wanted to come see you. I'm like, all right. I, I thought kind of bizarre. Well, here, my grandmother must have heard her walk in, so she comes upstairs. I freaked out. I'm like, oh, no, the only person that, that's here is obviously my grandmother because she didn't go to work today. Mm -hmm. So I grab an apple from the kitchen, <laughs> put her in the closet, throw the apple in there, say, here, if you're hungry, just you know, eat this. And so... My Are you shitting me? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> threw your, you threw Nancy in the closet with an apple? Yeah. What's the, what kind of apple? A red Eddie apple. Smith? A red... <laughs> <laughs> Well, my grandma walks away after she, you know, she checked everything. She's like, all right, I thought I heard something. So I walk her out the front door. And uh, oh my she, God. when I opened up the closet door, she looked at me like, uh, I can't believe you did that. But didn't say the words, but you could tell by her face. Did not speak to me for about three months. I'm like, what? like I listen, I thought it was a normal crap. What do I know? Until I found out when we went to gym about uh, two weeks later, when all the girls started laughing at me, I had no clue. I'm thinking, like, all right, is, is something hanging out? Like, what's going on? They're like, oh, my, do you have an apple? I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh Christ. man. You're lucky you didn't get a bunch of apples, in, you know, in front of your locker. Not your gym locker, but outside, you know, your locker yeah. locker. <laughs> something else. It puts the apple in the basket. <laughs> uh, and you're, we're, I mean... You were sort of thoughtful with the apple, but no drink, no water, nothing.
No, it happened so quick that it was absolutely nothing. It just and she wasn't in it that long. It was less than probably like a minute. And my grandmother just guys, she was old school. That's just the way she was. Yeah, she had, it was less than a minute, and, and the door wasn't even completely closed. Would she have gotten mad? Would your grandmother have gotten mad at you for that? I mean, uh, like oh, yeah. oh, but even if you're, you're clothed and just standing in the kitchen, I mean, she would have got angry. Oh yeah, that's what. Listen, old school back in the day, the way they were. My grandmother especially, like if. if the only way it would have been normal if she would have been presented to my grandmother, even as a friend, she wouldn't have had a problem. But if it was someone that my grandmother didn't know, it was automatically that thing like, oh, I know what you kids are doing. I'm like, it's not that. Trust me. It's, I but, would rather be, you know, stroking a keyboard from the Commodore 64 yeah, back in the but, day than, than that. But what if you were just sitting at the kitchen table or standing there fully clothed, just having a glass of water? The, 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 even then, nothing? Oh, yeah, no. Believe me, it was... Or if you're playing same. Monopoly or something. What are you playing checkers or chess or whatever? I mean, then something. It been, yeah, that would have been a different story because then she would have seen something going on. But if it was like nothing and just two people... Because you could hear everything. Before she got the floors replaced, Christ, you couldn't walk from one room to the next without hearing it downstairs. Like, oh, look, Mom's in the bedroom. Okay, now no, oh. she's in the living room. <laughs> <It was> ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous oh my Why god well she's still kicking 92 years old she's you know partially blind but she's still kicking that's that's freaking awesome that is great all right one hour down two more to go hang with me angel if you like patrick gilroy is snowed in and he's got no power he's actually leaving to go to a hotel it's oh, been geez. a day and a half since they've since they've had power so we're going to take another quick break here Another quick break here on the Pete Shepard Show. When we come back, uh, more shenanigans on this Friday. Some goofy, funny stuff uh, to tell you about. And we'll start to, to talk more about the women's Final Four, the N, uh, the uh, men's Final Four, MLB, NFL News, NBA, NHL. All part of the Pete Shepard Show here live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide Media Network. Back in a few. Seasons don't fear the reaper. No, due to wind, the sun, or the rain, we can be like they are. Come on, baby, don't feel the reaper. Baby, take my hand, don't feel the reaper. We'll be able to fly, don't feel the reaper. Baby, I'm your man.
Cowbell, no more cowbell, none, none. Uh, it's gone. It's Friday, no more cow. You don't need cowbell. Well, some of you might to wake you up in the morning. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Anyway, uh, welcome back to the Pete Shepard Show here on the Riptide Media Network, live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio. I want to remind everybody you can catch us, uh, catch the, the show video as well, all over the place on Twitter, on X. Follow me at Pete Shep three two six on my Facebook page, also on the Broad Street South Facebook page and YouTube uh, pages as well. And uh, what else? Oh, yes. And the uh, app on my uh, the uh, link to my on my Facebook page also kicks it out to 102.9. So you can listen that way as well. Courtesy of Angel Martinez. Thank you, my friend, who's still joining me. Patrick Gilroy snowed in in the middle of New Hampshire and no power and has to leave somehow. And honestly, I hope he's 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 going to a hotel because there's no power in a lot of New England. Heavy, wet snow fell like four to four inches to a foot, depending on where you were from parts of Massachusetts up to Maine. And it's that heavy, wet, what we call heart attack snow, which a lot of you people around the country would have no idea about. And I don't want you to have an idea about it. It's terrible. But I still have a lot of friends and family up there. And uh, to get a, uh, a crappy, horrible storm like this on April 4th, April 5th, it's uncalled for, Angel. It's uncalled for. Don't mess with Mother Nature. No, it's a complete violation by Mother Nature to do so at this point. But that, no, it's listen. That I don't miss that at all because exactly what it is. It, you can get an easy heart attack and or a stroke. Now, not to even include depending on where you live in the city. For us, we clean out our spot, and here comes the snow plow right down the city street. Oh we yeah, carry right back in. Yep, absolutely. And uh, if you ever lived in the city, I'm sure Philadelphia, parts of Philadelphia, must be like this. I know a lot of parts of Boston are like this. You shovel out a spot. I never did this uh, when I lived in the city for 10 years, but a lot of people would shovel out their spot and just think putting a cone there or a chair or a couple of chairs is going to save it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times at work, because God forbid uh, that you, you know, took the chairs and parked your car there, you wouldn't have much of a car left in the morning. Sure and would. there weren't a lot of cameras around back then, and no one's going to rat anybody out. So it's very, it becomes uh, it becomes very interesting. My car used to get hit by snow plows all the time, parked on the street, and no note. I can't tell you how many times I came out. No side view mirror, window smashed, door dented. Can't even tell you uh, how bad it used to be sometimes in Boston. But, with, with those, uh, but usually I would just get my car and go put it in the, uh, in the Brinks parking lot yes the same from the movie way back in the day uh which is right down by the guard right 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 across the street or down the street i should say from uh from the garden so no, no, and man no, and nobody shovels him and nobody shovels anymore angel nobody no. comes around to shovel i don't no. know not around here you're not shoveling sunshine as we say down here in southwest florida but you know it used to be kids would go out five bucks a driveway ten bucks a driveway whatever yeah. none of that anymore no entrepreneurs out there what the hell's going on yeah, that was the best way to make money because, you know, you were a kid. That's First of all, you had no idea until a neighbor came out and says, here you go. I'm like, what's that? He goes, here, for doing that. I'm like, no, it's fine. He goes, no, 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 here, please. And it was like, oh, this is how this works. And <laughs> time to make a lucrative deal. So by midday, you know, as a kid, if you raked up 50 bucks, you know, or you know, shoveled for the most part, but for 50 bucks, uh, we were golden because, you know, you go to the candy store or, you know, the bodega, depending where you lived at. And yeah. you had penny candies, penny gums. I mean, it was yeah. great. Oh, my God. We had uh, up the street from where I lived in Narragansett. 
when I was a kid, it was that that beautiful store. It was called Papa's Grocery. It was probably a little bit bigger, maybe double the size of this studio. Guy was great. Uh, Tom Senior Papa was just. Just he was he was the candy man. You know in Willy Wonka, the first one, the original candy man, that was that that this guy was so nice. And a dollar would get you a whole lot of stuff. Most of it not good for you, but nevertheless. But he also had, you know, like bread and milk and water, but but it was a can it was basically a big time candy store. And you know what? And he would always do if you were you walk coming home from school and thought you had fifty cents, but you didn't, and you went in and he went in your pockets and it's okay. It's okay. You take it. You have it. Have a candy bar. Always one of the most generous people and beloved people that uh, I've ever met in my life. And that's just from a guy running a simple, you know, convenience store that was, you know, if it was 100 feet by 100 feet, it was a mile. And he was, everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. It was, it was great. Yeah, those are the people, you know, those are the people you don't forget. No, exactly. The only thing that we had in, in Philly, which I thought was kind of uh, kind of unique, but it, for those who don't know, who's who've been born and raised in Florida or any warm you know part of the states <laughs> where it's never snowed, so you have this thing called "Don't eat the yellow snow." Now, in the summertime, <laughs> the odd thing was we had a guy that would come around a cart and he saw what's called piragua, and that's just shaved ice, and then mm -hmm. he would put you know whatever you wanted. Like so, my grandmother who came to visit one time from New England. She comes down and he, you know, he comes around with a cart and I know she loved pineapple. So I run up to him, give him a nickel and he gave me the shaved ice. I gave it to my grandmother. She goes, what's this? What she's saying in Spanish. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's a piragua, shaved ice. It's no, 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 no. It's jello. <laughs> no, it's not what you think. It's not the one time, grandma. No, 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 no. Do you not fool me with the jello ice? I'm like, okay. All right. Thanks. And so I told this is pineapple. So now I take a chunk of it out and she, and she damn near almost just threw up right on the sidewalk. Like, it's pineapple Good. shaved ice. It's not that kind of yellow snow. It the, took forever to convince her, but she finally ended up eating it. But she she really thought her grandson is going to give her pea snow. I mean, I told my grandmother was unique. She was unique. You didn't pull, you know, you didn't pull a type of tricks on her earlier in your life, right? That she would, no. uh, that she would, I was going to say, <laughs> that's the last thing anyone would do. Feed your grandmother uh, a, a snow cone with pee in it. Right. Yeah. So for those who don't know, that's exactly what it was. So don't eat the yellow snow in the wintertime. If it snowed, <laughs> you saw yellow snow. Yeah. You didn't touch it because you was a dog or a human, one or two. <laughs> There's a great episode where uh, in Seinfeld, where Bette Midler, you know, I don't know if you remember, where they, um, she wanted a pineapple uh, Italian ice, same thing, you know, the snow cone, same thing, with, you, know, you know, just ice, shaved ice with whatever you wanted. It. And then yeah, I remember Kramer ran around the whole city trying to find a pineapple, and then George barreled over uh, Bette Midler at the plate in the charity softball game. And the understudy that Jerry was dating got the, got the part, remember? And she would cry at the drop of a hat. She, she dropped her hot dog and cried. All that stuff. But speaking of crying, uh, the Miami Marlins, who are just awful, but they get a break today, Angel. I don't know if you saw this. The uh, scheduled start time for, for actually Monday's game between the Yankees and the Marlins has been changed. Did you hear about this? To never? No, uh, because of a solar eclipse. Oh, the Yankees initially set to host the Marlins at 2.05 p.m. Eastern time. The start was pushed back four hours. This is a first for me. Uh, the Yankees said in a statement yesterday, after reconsidering the challenges of playing through Monday's solar eclipse, including potential in-game delays, Major League Baseball and the Yankees have rescheduled the start time of the Yankees-Marlins game on April 8th at Yankee Stadium from 2.05 p.m. until 6.05 p.m. So the ballpark gates will open at 3, and as previously planned, the first 15,000 fans to arrive will receive a Yankees solar eclipse T-shirt. <laughs> Come on. What if it's cloudy? Exactly. What if it gets rained out? <laughs> it's Jeez Louise, man. It's just an eclipse. It'll come, you know, in a bunch of other years, but goodness gracious. Oh, oh. my God. Uh, it's just, it, By it's, the way, uh, yeah. Did you see that Nike now also, um, they're testing out new uniforms because finally the complaints have come so bad between the mismatch of colors, the lettering, and obviously the see through pants. That they they finally started doing something about it. They were like the fanatics have done a great job for us for the last four years. But I mean, come on, it, it was more than the obvious during spring training when the guys were complaining. And as we all know, 
Some people, men and women included, they just like to go commando, and and some people got to see more than they were supposed to have. Well, Angel, it's funny you bring that up because this was a story uh, that I saw yesterday. Um, yesterday, I'm part of the interruption on ESPN. Pablo Torre, who now works with Dan Lebertard, who used to be at ESPN, they started to talk about Major League Baseball uniforms. There's a problem here. Take a listen to this. So Pablo, sweat stains, deal, <laughs> little deal, no deal. This is a big deal, Tony. And I have to disclose, of course, I work with Dan Lebetard now, so I know what a sweat stain means and looks like. <laughs> this stuff yes. is Lebetardian. Yes. <laughs> this stuff is how, how did you not notice this before? And so look, the parties to blame here are Nike, Foremost, and Fanatics, right? So they're in some manufacturing <laughs> dynamic, yeah. but Nike seems to be the one now answering the questions because it was their call in the end. So I want to address this from this perspective. This makes your game, your sport, look cheap. <laughs> it makes it look yes. like you don't know what you're doing. Tony, I come to this show and I wear a tie because you have told me that I need to look like an adult. If I showed That's up right. here with a Fanatics uniform covered in sweat, you'd say, yeah. why is this man here doing this job alongside the rest of the grown-ups? Yes, I am so glad you mentioned Levitard because for people who don't understand this, by the <laughs> second inning of a game in Miami in July, he would look like the Mississippi River. He would have to change jerseys between yeah. pitches. I mean, there's lots going on with Major League Baseball uniform. Plus the fact, remember, people thought they were see-through. Yeah. And I know there was a, there, there was an issue. There was. There, there, there was an issue. Yeah. Um, also, also an issue is uh where's that story i just punched up no, 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 no. um oh it is about tiger woods did you hear about this mm, probably not okay tiger woods is making preps of course to compete in the masters next week and taking drastic measures to ensure he's ready to play a good friend of his says, the 48-year-old golfer, he's focused, he's working really hard in the gym, he's eating right, Angel, and more importantly, he's even eliminated sex. What? He does that now when he's, quote, he does that now when he's preparing no sex until the tournament is over. He doesn't want anything to take away his focus. So <laughs> Is he the he, new Charlie Harper when he was dating Mia on Two and a Half Men? <laughs> oh, that's right. Woods is currently single. His six-year relationship with girlfriend Erica Herman, a former waitress at his restaurant in Jupiter, ended acrimoniously back uh, yeah, last year. And, you know, she took him to court. She sued him for $30 million in an attempt to get out of a non-disclosure agreement she had signed but dropped the case in November last year. Woods also previously dated ski racer Lindsey Vaughn. When asked by the Post, if uh, New York Post, if Woods is currently dating, his pal has said, there's no one to speak of. Wow. Oh, wow. How about that? How about that? That's, Tiger that's abstaining. Me. Now, yeah. George Costanza abstained as well in, in Seinfeld in one episode. He became smarter. He was answering all those Jeopardy questions and everything else and became, uh, became smarter. Um, from the Daily Mail. This is another interesting story. Bottom of the hour, by the way, Rick Horro, sports business guru, is going to join me for his weekly visits. There's lots to discuss there, particularly with the Oakland days and uh, a lot of other a lot of other business stuff with with Rick. Uh, at nine o'clock, John Ryder will join me, a Sports Center anchor on ESPN Radio, a good friend of mine. And nine thirty, handicapper Gabe Morenci will join me as well. So this came um, to me today. I saw this story. And I have here the top 10 unhealthiest cities in America. In America. Hmm. Philly being number one. No. Um, I just want to see. Uh, let me, I want to punch it up here. Top unhealthiest cities in America. Oh, no, wait a minute. Starting to no. get, no, starting, let's see if you can get uh, this. Uh, uh, I'm proud to say none of them from the Northeast nice. and none of them from the state of Florida, where we are. Even better. So L.A. tops it. Uh, no, and none from California. Oh, what? I'm sorry. I, no, yeah, no, no, none from California either. 
kidding me? All the all the California, all the avocado they eat out there, and you know the healthy tacos and all that stuff. No, this is true. The top unhealthiest cities in America, and then I'll explain how they got to this. I guess number one or number ten, I should say. I'm gonna go from ten to one. Okay. The ten um, worst unhealthiest city in America is in West Virginia, Huntington, West Virginia, which is where Marshall University is, I believe. Hmm. Not eating well in Huntington, West Virginia. Number nine. This is the biggest, one of the biggest cities out. Number nine, Detroit, Michigan. You awful, unhealthy. Detroit, Michigan, uh, ninth unhealthiest city in America. Number eight, Corpus Christi, Texas. Really? Yes. Yep. That's Number that's seven. Holy yeah. Man. Number seven, uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> uh, I can kind of see that. Number six, we were just talking about this city with Tiger. Augusta, Georgia, the sixth uh -huh. most unhealthiest city in America. Now, you know what they give out at the Masters? They give out sandwiches of like pimento cheese and everything else. The food and the drinks at the Masters when you go, I've never been, but I know a lot of people that have. It's very cheap. Getting there is expensive. Tickets are expensive. But then once you get in, the food and the drinks are cheap. Even the beer is cheap. You're not paying 20, you're paying like four bucks. And the sandwiches are like $2 or a buck, something like that. It's crazy. So, we're, uh, so from 10 to 6, Huntington, West Virginia, Detroit, Michigan, Corpus Christi, Texas, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia is 6. Coming in at number 5, from the great state of Louisiana, no, not Baton Rouge, no, not New Orleans, but Shreveport, <laughs> Louisiana. Yes, fifth worst unhealthiest city in America. Number 4, back to the Peach State, Angel, Columbus, Georgia. Not eating healthy these days. They are number four. Coming in at number three, also from Texas, Laredo, Texas. Hope I'm saying that right. Laredo, Texas, L-A-R-E-D-O, right? Laredo, yep. Texas, number three. Number two, unhealthiest city in America is Gulfport, Mississippi. Where they it's usually have good, they have good oysters in Mississippi, I'm told. And alligator bites. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll tell you, down here, I never had gator bites till I came down here. I love them. And they're only, and especially because you only use the tail. You don't use the, 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 what would the I would call the fillet it. of an alley. You don't, you know, I know some people, you know, cook them occasionally, but their alligator bites down here are, on the whole, are really, really good. And I'm told you have to get the, you know, you're really good in season when you get the young ones. Hate to say it, but what are you going to do? Right. And number one, top unhealthiest city in America is also from the great state of Texas, Angel. Brownsville, Texas, where everything is bigger and unhealthier. And that is at the tip, the very, very tip of Texas. At uh, I mean, on the bottom, right, right there. That is, you're almost in the gulf. You're almost in the ocean. Wow. That's that's surprising, especially from Texas. I mean, we oh, we went to San Antonio two. It's been two years now. Yeah, I mean everything there. Where so on the Riverwalk, I will say like you don't. I love it. Fine. There's not a McDonald's there. Like it, it's either high end or you're getting a, a real budget friendly restaurant, but it's all good food. Like it's it's rare to find something really bad. No, you don't. And what you find a lot of are Marriott's. There's like three of them in the River Walkway. Yeah. Two on the one side, one across the street on the other. The only place I've ever seen anything like that is Manhattan in New York. But uh, I love uh, San Antonio. I think it's one of the few places in Texas I would live. Yeah. I think I could live there. Uh, yeah. I loved it. And you know, the Alamo is overrated, but it's really cool when you go in and you, you, you see it. It's very small. Uh, but I loved San Antonio. That's right. I, I went down there the first ever. I don't know if I told you the first ever Hard Knocks was there when the Dallas Cowboys were there. Right. That's where they came. That's when Dave Campbell was the coach. So the HBO sent me down there. My job was to watch three days of practice and then talk about it for five minutes. That's it to promote the show. And it was absolutely unbelievable how Dave Campbell had no idea what he was doing. They were running uh, like wind sprints and stuff. And then they were going back and doing stretching exercises. It was, it didn't make a lot of sense to me to go back and stretch after you were doing, 
you know, drills. I, I didn't get that at all. But then the best part of it was Bruce Coslett's room at the time, who's down here in Southwest Florida, by the way. Uh, he was the assistant coach, former jet coach, and his room was next to mine. I remember walking by, <laughs> I'm like, because they lost, like, they had three, like, bad injuries. I forget who it was. Two starters, one in the second. I forget their names, who it was, because this was 24 years ago. Um, so I went, hey, coach, I said, uh, that, was a, that was a pretty rough day. And he said nothing, gave me a smirk, and just shook his head, went into his room, shut the door, and, like, disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. At, you could just tell what was going on. Tom says, good morning, Pete, Angel, and Broad Street South. What's up? Mike says, good morning. Happy Friday. Yep, absolutely. So, Bronzeville, Texas, ranked it as the least healthiest U.S. city to call home, according to a study released earlier this week by Wallet Hub, which measured the quality of health care, food, green spaces, and the fitness of its people. The Gulf Coast city of some 190,000 people scored badly among the 182 major cities measured with among the least fit people and the worst diet in the country. Gulfport, Mississippi, Laredo, Texas, Columbus, Georgia, Shreveport, Louisiana rounded out the worst performing five. Now, from number 11 to 16 or 11 to 20, Angel, right. um, there's a place in Arkansas, which uh, it's, it just says a number. So there's a place in Arkansas right on the border of Oklahoma. That's 11. Number 12 is someplace uh, on the Kentucky. Oh, not Kentucky. Uh, the Virginia, North, it's in North Carolina. Somewhere right on the uh, precipice uh, on the Virginia-North Carolina line. Number 13 would be a place in Tennessee. I don't think it's Knoxville. It's far, a little far west, almost to Arkansas. Uh, that's number 13. Number 14, again, nothing nothing in the Northeast. Unbelievable. 14 is uh, also a place in Mississippi that I can't see. Number 15 is Alabama, in some place in Alabama, right in the middle of the state. 16, this is the furthest west one in Nevada, way down the bottom on the Cal-Arizona border. Don't know this. Don't know the town. Number seventeen is up north, Texas, right bordering Oklahoma. Eighteen is where is eighteen? Uh, eighteen is in New Mexico, down by Albuquerque, a little bit south of Albuquerque. Number eighteen, <laughs> Breaking Bad country. Nineteen is right on the Ohio Minnesota line, way up north in Ohio, and number twenty is. Uh, where is number 20? Number 20. Don't know where number 20 is. Uh, oh, I think it's um, someplace in the tip of Wisconsin. So unbelievable. So all of New England and Pennsylvania, nothing. Nothing in Florida, South Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, California, Wyoming, Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, all all free, all healthy. It, you think, and it's surprising too, because with the Northeast, you got to remember that it's, I mean, it's a long winters, especially yes. like this winter up in the Northeast. So, hey, there, I mean, there are people that end up working out, but I'm Texas though. I'm I'm really surprised because there is so many different authentic foods. Well, I guess if you're eating and not taking care of your body, that's one thing. But I see. I was thinking the other way. I was thinking like because. Obviously, L.A. with the smog and then continue to because to, when you fly into L.A., I mean, you can't freaking miss it. But I, that's what I was thinking. I didn't think about as far as the food, the health care and, and and obviously people working out or not working out. Well, you TLC had last night we were watching. We're, we're watching somewhere between there. So I had uh, Ryan Shaw on last night. After that, we started watching something called I think it was like too large. And the, the guy was in his 20s. I want to say like maybe 24 and wanted to lose weight and stepped on the scale uh, at 664 pounds, something like that. Oh. And the doctor told him, listen, if you don't start dropping this weight, I mean, you're young now, but that diabetes is not going on the door. And not only that, but you are yep. about to stop everything, your heart, the whole nine yards. So hopefully, oh, we lost Pete. He'll be back in a second. Hopefully. 
something. Well, Angel happen. dropped. Oh, there you are. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, Angel, going to take another quick break uh, here on the Pete Shepard Show, uh, Riptide Media. Uh, Riptide, Riptide Media Network, uh, live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio. Rick Horrell, sports business guru, is going to join me uh, next here on the, uh, on the on the Pete Shepard Show. Uh, lots to talk about with him coming up in the nine o'clock hour. John Ryder will join me. He's a sports center. Uh, he's, he's a sports center anchor for uh, ESPN on the radio. And then at nine thirty, we're going to get into some numbers with Gabe Berenci, star handicapper. All part of the Pete Shepard Show here coming up on live from the Nipples Well Planning Studio, Riptide Media Network. We're back with Rick Horro and a few. Shepherd Show, live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio. How's everybody doing? I keep forgetting I'm, I'm still on camera all the time. I'm dancing around. I still like playing that song on the piano a little bit. Uh, great, great stuff. 
Um, I'm doing great this morning. I am doing absolutely uh, fantastic. It's so great to be with all of you. Angel Martinez was hanging out. Rick Horrell, our sports business guru, is going to join me in just a couple of minutes. Lots to talk about with him. John Ryder, ESPN Radio Sports Center anchor, is going to join me at 9.05. And then the one and only Gabe Morenci is uh, going to join me as well coming up. At 9.30 this morning, NCAA Women's Final Four tonight. you got to be excited about it. Come on, 7 o'clock on ESPN, NC State versus South Carolina. And then at 9, the matchup everybody's been waiting for, Caitlin Clark versus Paige Beckers. I can't ever remember a matchup in women's college basketball that I've been more excited uh, to see. Going to be outstanding. And then the Men's Final Four tomorrow. Both of those games, by the way, tonight on ESPN. The Men's Final Four tomorrow. We'll have uh, my phone's acting up again. Got to make sure. Okay. I got to reset that. All righty. All righty. Because Rick, Rick will be upset because I always uh, kid him for, for being late. But uh, that should be okay. That should be okay. Andrew Martinez is back with us. And NC State, Purdue tomorrow night, Alabama versus UConn. Both of those games, by the way, on TBS. And uh, I did not realize, Angel, that Fubo does not have the Turner Broadcasting stations. They don't have Turner. They don't have TBS. They don't have TNT. They don't have True TV, and they don't have TNT. Unbelievable. Well, I think because they've they since it's free, kind of, kind of. But I think a lot of that it, they it kind of fell through because of some deals. I know a lot of them will try to make a bunch of deals. I think that's why kind of YouTube TV is really leading the competition. Yeah, no question. Now, football has some other things on there, too. They have Nesson and they have the Yes Network and a couple of the sports stations that probably a lot of people uh, in New England and New York area would want. But no, I just I, I just it's not worth it. I love YouTube TV. I love I love everything about it. I wish they don't have MLB Network and they don't have NHL Network, but I have them on my phone. So and a lot of that stuff is on ESPN Plus anyway, which I have. Uh, Kathleen, happy Friday, Pete. Happy Friday, Kathleen a great uh, Wisconsin uh, Badger fan and a very nice lady, as is her husband, Rick. Retired airline pilot pilot extraordinaire. Nothing like marrying an airline pilot, Angel. You can go anywhere you want. I bet. For nothing. Speaking (laughs) of, I forgot. I was going to make a clip up there. So we were at the air show last weekend. Oh. uh, One of the guys, he started flying since he was 18 years old. And currently is the number one champ of like air acrobatics. And I wanted to put if if uh, Spirit Airlines hires his pilot, I'm in like forever because the stuff that he was doing with the plane, I figured, well, if he can do that with a single engine plane, I'm golden if they hire him. That's amazing. Yeah, I got to bring that's, it up. I, I have to bring up the video. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's absolutely pretty cool. So where was that at? So that was. It was in Tampa. Was the air show in Tampa? Yeah, McDowell Air Force Base. So it, it was. The last time we went was two years ago because they were supposed to be doing upgrades to the tarmac. And apparently one of the other tarmacs, they couldn't get to it because it's all concrete. Um, the one that have to bust up and then to transition over from concrete asphalt back to concrete. So they had uh, the last time it was the Blue Angels that were in town. This time was the Thunderbirds, which we interviewed out there in Vegas. Um, but they had they didn't have the the one from two years ago. They had six different small engines that were out there and two guys were actually battling in the air, which they they look like at times that obviously they were going to collide, but but they did not but they added some more neat features, which was, uh, which was really cool. But yeah, this kid, he was, I think he was 23. Wow. um, Cause he, I, I, the guy said happy birthday. The last thing I heard was 22. So I'm thinking he must have just turned 23, but the, the stuff that he was doing up in the air was, it was absolutely nuts. Kathleen has another comment there for you. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you can read it, Angel. What's it say? Uh, she said, my oh. husband started flying at 14 and is 83 now and still flies for the Civil Air Patrol. All wow. right. Yeah. That's awesome stuff. All right. Uh, joining me right now, also flying high and usually flying around uh, all over the country, is uh, the one and only our sports business guru, Rick Horrell, joins me this morning here on the uh, Pete Shepard Show on uh, the Riptide Media Network. Hey, Rick, how are you and where are you? Riptide Media Network is wonderful. That that's uh, it's an it's an amazing opportunity for you and amazing opportunity for Angel. Who uh, my by the way my, my phone must have been broken over the last uh, four or five uh, months because you've never introduced me to him. Hi Angel. 
It is Angel Martinez. He's, like, hanging, he's, he's hanging out here. Yes. Uh, did you guys meet at Super Bowl? Uh, no. Did we meet at Super Bowl? I think so. But I, I'm not sure if we did. I, you would say no because I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of those mediocre guys you would never recognize. But, you know, no, you're a saying. superstar. So. Hey, no, because I think at the time we, we had walked next door. So I think I, I just missed you when you were on. Yeah, well, that's what a lot of people uh, would like <laughs> to, to have happen. <laughs> yeah, certainly, yeah. certainly Shepard. I've been trying to do that for a long time. I apologize, by the way, for this is not relevant to anything, Pete, but yeah. I was uh, I was just uh, uh, rescuing a couple of uh, yard workers in the throw of, throws of being uh, uh, attacked by my boy Duke, who is so <laughs> passive, except when he sees people, <laughs> except when he sees people <laughs> after me. And so... You know, I wanted him to sign the waiver, and I wanted to sign the yard guy to sign the sign the waiver. After they did, I let them maul maul each other. But I I had to go uh, make peace. I have a very serious question for you now. A two part question. One, are you? I'm I'm assuming, and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm assuming you're headed to the Augusta this week, correct? For the Masters, of course. No, okay. why would you not assume that? Uh, by the way, so here's the, I will I will give you the itinerary because it's because the Frozen uh, Four is that week. Go to the go to Minneapolis. Go to the XL Center. Go see some college hockey. Go watch BC and BU. If, out if, if I pump. didn't if I didn't go to Tampa for Frozen Four, which was a big mistake last year, yeah. I ain't going to Minneapolis. I, I'm sorry, that's just that's a little that's it's a little too that's a little too far for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's beautiful anytime. Frozen in time. Uh, I understand that they recovered like a. Uh, a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex frozen in the middle of downtown. Is that correct for the last 9 million years? Because yeah. it couldn't thaw out. Uh, so, I guess is right. So, so, good, so yeah. here's, hey, look, this is your show, my yeah. segment. So yes. here's what I'm telling you. <laughs> I just got back from t- two days and three blue, red, black extreme song last night, which was unbelievable. Okay. And then I'm going to go up to, uh, there's a, a, a big tournament, which is important for me to promote uh, over at uh, PJ National Sunday, Monday, uh, Big Dog Ranch, the amazing rescue facility, is having golf, tennis, pickleball. John Bon Jovi, Hugh Lewis, Darius Rucker, um, some football guys, a lot of pro sports guys. Amazing. Awesome. And then straight straight from there, uh, it's everybody should go. It's an amazing event. And then straight from there, um, going up to Columbia, South Carolina, play a couple rounds, go to the Masters, play a couple more rounds, uh, watch it. Uh, go to a couple of uh, Braves games, and then I'll be back with the pedestrians and, and you. So you're playing. You're playing a couple of rounds at the Masters, or at least one. Well, not, uh, no. If well, it depends. If I make the cut, I may play more. Uh, you know, I'll see. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yes. I am playing uh, at uh, the environs of Colum- of Columbia, South Carolina, gotcha. Aiken. And then uh, walking the masters, yes. Oh, fantastic! Uh, I want, before we get into some of the stuff you wrote about, and maybe you you probably write about this next week. How well do you know if you do? Because you know everybody in sports, especially owners and GMs. How well do you know John Fisher, the owner of the Oakland A's? Uh, not well. Uh, I've met him a couple of times. Uh, I've met him by uh, probably a bad thing to say because lawyers should say I've met him by reputation. Uh, there are a lot of people who say he's gruff. And he's not a people person, but you know what? Uh, he's a businessman, so I don't. Uh, I probably shouldn't say it that way. He's trying to maximize his revenue with the A's, and uh, you know uh, the Sacramento thing. Uh, in, in retrospect, uh, may be the best thing for for him, um, and certainly for Major League Baseball. Uh, they clear him out of town. You know, he would be just a constant uh, reminder for Major League Baseball of what they're doing wrong. Uh, in, in Oakland, uh, if he stayed there, and there'd be protests every day. And uh, you know, the Sacramento deal—if people really want to establish, hey, we like you guys, we wanted you to stay. Well, you know, drive the hour, and then go to a game the next three years. So, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, again, I mean, the final offer—they would have been responsible, the A's, for ninety-seven million extension fee. They would have been due in full, even if they chose to opt out. They currently pay one point two five million. I mean, they've been trying to get this thing renovated for a couple. It was like twenty years, right? Uh, how come they can't get it? How come they can't get it done? I I, I don't understand. I, I, it's, it's, it's just strictly money, Rick. Uh, it's always a combination of money and political will, uh, and le- lack of leadership. I, I'll say it that way, and mm-hmm. people aren't going to like it. But you know, I've worked a lot in Oakland, and and candidly. 
you know, trying to get a new stadium, Jack London Square, it's certainly not, there's no shortage of opportunities. It was a great deal. The idea of flip-flopping on property that the city and county would maneuver, and then out at the old uh, ODAC.co Coliseum, uh, you know, the basketball arena there off of 880 when you drive it, that becomes property that can be turned into something that the city would do. Uh, and the county would do, and they would build a stadium near Jack London Square. That's all a great idea. Unfortunately, Oakland is going to be one of those categories where, you know, you think now you're going to apply for a return to the city. Uh, but just because you're asking for one, it's going to take a long time, if ever, to get one back. And if you don't think so, you know, just ask St. Louis. Okay, well, I was just going to get, well, not only that, I was going to get to Jackson County, Missouri on Tuesday where the Kansas City Chiefs uh, got denied the funding for the new uh, ballpark for the Kansas City Royals that would be located in the heart of of the city. The majority of voters, 58% against the sales tax plan, which hindered the renovations from Arrowhead, leaving their future questionable. As we know, their lease at the Truman Sports Complex runs out January 31st, 2031. Chiefs have been there since moving out of Texas since 1972. The mayor, you probably saw this, the mayor of Texas, uh, Mayor Eric L. Johnson, is already walking on the back to the Cotton Bowl. Um, Jerry Jones is having a conniption. I mean, my God. So I know you're involved in a lot of stadiums, obviously, over the years. Uh, has anybody contacted you? And how do you think this is all going to play out with Kansas City and Arrowhead? Yeah, no, I, a lot of people have contacted me, and I've told them that I'm, I'm you know, busy with my dog in my golf but i gave them your home number because i think i think the world would be uh, in really good hands with Thanks. pete shepherd because you're so sensitive politically and, and you you know you 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 carry your word so clearly <laughs> there would be nuclear war 10 seconds into a consultancy all of the teams in town would leave <laughs> it would be it would be speed to the door man you would be anyway you didn't ask me that i know you yeah. i know you didn't get in the middle of this i've been I've been in Kansas City a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, worked on, uh, you know, here's Pat on the back, but you know that Kansas City Speedway, that was kind of my help and creation with uh, playing uh, uh, Kansas City, Kansas against Kansas City, Missouri, uh, to try to get the economic impact of the uh, of the uh, uh, racetrack there, the uh, Sprint Racetrack and Kansas City Speedway, uh, one of the first, uh, you know, non-sleepy southeastern NASCAR tracks. Uh, so it happens in that town. You just got to come up with the right formula. I, I do know Mark Donovan, the president of the Chiefs. I, I know the Hunts. And if you have a family that's just so revered, um, I, I think it took a lot of people by surprise, to be honest about it. It was three-eighths of a cent. It's not going to break anybody. And Kansas City did approve an arena uh, called the Sprint Center, right, for that, that, that city with no basketball, no hockey. Uh, so it's been done. Uh, I, I do think they'll, they're will they now going to start looking at, uh, at opportunities uh, in uh, Kansas City, Kansas. There's a lot of land out there in that complex. You know, just having a mayor of Dallas stand up and say, we want you, that doesn't automatically, the, the, the moving trucks are, are going to back up and, and, and do it. And by the way, I don't know if you've been to the Cotton Bowl in the last hundred years, <laughs> but it ain't an NFL stadium. No, not I'm anymore. I'm sorry. I mean, no, no, no. no, the fact that you have to, uh, not even uh, to go to the press box. You have to. You can't even uh, 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 go up the stairs. You got to shimmy up ropes because there's no elevator, there's no stairs. I mean, that becomes like a kind of difficult in, 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 at the Cotton Bowl. But anyway, uh, it's a good. You know, Cotton Bowl is great for what it is. It's one game a year, uh, uh, and and that's it. But but uh, you know, now we're going to do some con- some musical chairs with stadiums, and and we're gonna you know we're gonna see what happens. And uh, the game's game on. Yeah, no question. Uh, a lot of your thoughts last week when Kim Mulkey was threatening, I know you wrote about this, uh, that Kim Mulkey was threatening to sue the Washington Post. And we were all waiting with bated breath about this article. And I think I and others agree, once the article came out, Rick, it was kind of boring or something. And most of it, I'd say 95% of it, she had written in a book previously, I think back in 2007. And there really wasn't a lot of new stuff in there. So, but um, And obviously, it doesn't seem that she's going to file a lawsuit, but would she have had something? Would she have had any time she threatened, you know, to get the the best defamation of character lawyers out there, which I'm sure you're one of them. And I didn't know if she called you, but no, if seriously, would she have had a case with, uh, with Mr. Babb of the Washington post, very well-respected writer, by the way. 
Yeah, I, I, you know what? Reckless disregard, defamation, it's very hard to prove, and the damages are very hard to prove. And especially if, as you said, there's been that kind of stuff in a book before, so a lot of it is not new revelation. Uh, her skin is a little thin. I think she wanted to make a, 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 a statement for her kids, uh, her players, that she was going to fight for what she believed in. And, uh, you know, she got the L.A. Times to, to back down on a story about uh, uh, how uh, the uh, uh, LSU players were manhandling those poor UCLA kids. Uh, and so I, I, uh, I, I, I appreciate her motives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you threaten to file a lawsuit uh, with no intention of filing it just because you want to, you know, stir people up. I mean, I've, I've seen how you dress on a golf course and I, you know, I would sue for that, but, but I, I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, threaten you enough where it would scare you when I'd really file it. Just, I want to scare you from time to time because you're, you're fun being scared. Yeah. Uh, and you're great to play golf with because you are the master of it's good. <laughs> uh, he'll give you a Rick will be, give you a 15 foot putt. It's like, I, I, I'll take it. What did we call you? Hey, wait a second. Is, Bri is <laughs> Brian, good. Yeah, Brian oh, by the way, Brian <laughs> just texted me and said, tell Rick, I love him. So Brian Bruno, President uh, of Naples Wealth Planning. No, you called it COVID good back in the day when we were playing together. Yeah, I said, we have, I call it COVID good, but what else, what else did we call you? What, what, what are we calling you on, on, uh, uh, you're the director of, uh, of uh, business sales oh, no, reconnaissance? Oh, no. I, I am executive vice president of Riptide Media uh, Network. Oh, that's great! No, uh, congratulations for that. But I, I don't. I'm not. I don't care about that now. I'm, I care about what happened at the golf course. You remember? And Brian knows this, and he he'll text you because yeah. we talked about it last week. Um, when you hit the ball seven fairways over. Oh yeah. And I said you're a great sales guy because you would hit those Naples wealth balls and they'd be all over the golf course. Mm -hmm. And we called you a director of uh, uh, marketing of, of, or something like that. Yeah. Mar but some kind of marketing title yeah. that everybody liked. Yeah. Brian, will, Brian will text you. I guarantee you. And when you do it <laughs> and, this, and this segment is over, you got to read it. If he's listening to you, you got to read it. All, all right. right. So what's going on this weekend? Anything for you? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, watch tonight more than anything. Hey, Aren't you? Uh, so here's here's the thing. Uh, they uh, double, double, double prices. Women's final four versus men. Yes. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, uh, that's uh, we'll talk about that sometime too. We'll talk about that next week. But I'm going to watch that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch men's. I'm going to watch women's. Then the uh, the uh, golf tournament starts Sunday. The uh, the uh, big dog ranch thing, which will be fun. I I think I'm. I, I want to. Darius Rucker is is such a. I'm such a fan. I've spent a little time with him, but you know what we have in common. I mean, big dolphin guy. Oh, yeah. You know that. Remember? Dolphins made me yeah, cry. Yeah, dolphins make me cry. Yeah, don't sing. Please don't oh, sing. I'm, I'm, Please. I'm unbelievable. I was thinking you went Duke lost to North Please. Carolina State the other day. Please. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. Uh, I, I knew you had to get that in there. Uh, you know, Coach K taught these kids to play 40 minutes. John Shire teaches them to play 32. Ouch. I mean, that's the difference. Ouch. That's enough. Yeah, ouch. All right, look, <laughs> All right, can Martin. I can I leave you and go to more more important stuff? That, that's I, I impossible. There's nothing more important in your life, at least between 8.30 and 8.45 <laughs> on a I, Friday. <laughs> I got to go feed Duke and tell uh, tell Brian I love him, too. Okay, All will right. do. Bye. Thanks. A lot. A lot of man, a lot of bro love going on. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That is uh, the one and only Rick Horro, sports business guru here joining us. And uh, he is, he's all over the place. He's all over the place. It's funny, Angel, when I want to drop a call, it won't drop, but then it'll drop when you don't want it to drop. Went, right. <laughs> but yeah. then it's all, now I just did it. Anyway, that was a uh, Rick Horro. Let me check my, my phone with text and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, no, he oh, was good. He yeah. Was, I got was funny. I had just brought, missed down there in Vegas. I had just missed him being on because I I was um, God. It was that I'm almost certain it was that morning when we were all waiting for freaking coffee that never got there. So I ended up taking a trip downstairs because they didn't have it outside the doors. So I I think I just been uh, miss Rick being on air. Oh, uh, oh well. Um, yeah, Brian uh, Brian Bruno, President of Naples Wealth Planning, said I'm I'm the Chief Distribution Officer. Yes. That day, we that particular day we played a couple months ago out at Old Corkscrew, which is Florida Gulf Coast University's home course. Very tough course, very nice course. And uh, oh, the first three drives I had were awful, but I will say the next like twelve were were fairly consistent. But yeah, when I miss Angel, I miss. You know, I hadn't played in uh, the excuse. I haven't played three and a half months.
Uh, and uh, so that's my that's my excuse. Plus, I was a 14 handicap at one time when I first moved down here and was playing four times a week. But then it just got it got too tiring to do it before work and everything else. And that went from a 14 to a 19. And I'm okay with that. If you don't play golf, if you really want to get good at golf, you have to play three to five times a week. Otherwise, just have fun. Just It's all about the people you play with anyway. Golf is all about, it's like going to a wedding, right? You can go to the most beautiful, extravagant wedding. If you're with a bunch of a-holes, yeah. you want to get the hell out of there. Whereas yeah. you could be in a shack, you know, with 10 of your best friends and have a ball. You sure um, can. What's the most handicap in, in golf? The what? What's the, like the worst handicap in golf? Oh well, I mean, they take the average of your, your they take an average of your best ten scores and your worst ten scores, and then they do it. But I mean, you can have a forty handicap, which means you shoot about one hundred and twelve. The average golf score in America, I believe, honestly, still is about one hundred and three. It's been that way for like thirty years. That's the average golf score in America, one hundred and three. So you're shooting fifty ones, fifty. You know, for me now, if I break fifty on any given nine, I'm happy with that. I got no problem with that. But yeah, the average golf score is up. But you can have a you can have a forty five handicap if in you know, if you count, you, you know, if you're counting all the strokes and you're adding it all up and all that stuff, but there's, once you get established a certain handicap. So if I'm a, if I'm a, like a 14 handicap and I can't take more than a triple bogey, that because what happens is you get, you get a lot of people, a lot of people do this. They put down scores that, that, uh, they don't necessarily get. And I don't mean in a good way. It's a bad way. They'll 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 get a bogey of five or a double bogey of six and put down ten. You know? And then when it comes down to having tournaments and everything else, you have these guys with 30 handicaps, 25, 26 handicaps, who really are like 15 handicaps, and then they just kick the crap out of you on the on the golf course because you got to give strokes and all that stuff. But anyway, we digress. Uh, Dylan says, howdy, gents. Angel, congrats on your new Predators job. How do you think the league will perform this season in year one? It's going to be a bounce-back season, to say it at best. Um, it's going to be tough because a lot of these guys, like the Philip Soul, for example, they have not played in the league since the league had gone belly up because of COVID. So this will be the first time those guys are inside the arena. So for the Philip Soul, it'll be a little bit tough for them. Um, for everybody else, there were a couple other teams like Orlando, for example, with the Indoor Football League and, and other things they had to come across. They will probably have some good success. Uh, the Voodoo will have some good success. So I will say about half the league will do really well. The other half, they're going to end up finding their legs as it's set on a boat. Um, so I would expect, though, the, the turnout for the fans uh, should be pretty high. So again, it, it's ten dollars tickets. You cannot go wrong with the ten dollars arena no. football league. You know, ticket. Plus, it's so fast paced that by the time the game starts, I mean, it, literally, it's over. And not only that, when it's time for them to go to the championship game and even during the playoffs, it's still ten dollars. So it's not like you know they don't raise the prices during the playoffs. So I think for year one, it'll be year one will be very unique. I, I will put it in, in best terms because it, everybody's going to have to try and find how they're going to be able to. Fulfill not only the obligations, but also for the players on the team because it's everybody knows it's a short condensed field. It's only 25 yards uh, when you look at it, 50 yards altogether. But it's going to be a uh, high impact that we've seen. Guys will go flying into the seats. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would expect for, for a really good season. By the way, as we were talking, Kathleen had text for the first time saying, hey, it's Kathleen texting for the first time. Uh, which Kathleen? Not uh, not the Kathleen. Is there another Kathleen? Uh, I don't know. Unless it's it's the same Kathleen that we had saw on the screen there. So uh, oh, maybe could be. Maybe yeah. No, I've known Kathleen for like seven, almost eight years now. She was a loyal listener to my other job, and uh, she's been great. Her and her hubby are, uh, are wonderful, wonderful people. She's a huge Wisconsin Badger fan, a huge Minnesota Vikings fan uh, as well. Um, all right, going to take another quick break here in a second here, Angel, but. Um, John Ryder's going to join me. You hear him on ESPN Radio. Uh, he does all the a lot of the Sports Center updates along with my good friends uh, Kevin Winter and Doug Brown. All those guys are from New England. I mean, it's all they do over there is hire update guys from New England. Doug's been there forever. He's also the voice of BU basketball uh, as well, among other things. They're all doing a great job, and and thank God they've all kept their jobs because they cut back over there like crazy all the time. So, yeah, uh, you just. Uh, yeah, you never know. I wanted to ask you, too, about the Predators. Now, are you going to be traveling with the team? 
Uh, I haven't been told yet uh, unless they, they feel like doing so. So I don't know um, where there's still things that are being discussed. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, uh, it, it would be fun. That's for sure. To be able to, to travel with the team the entire season, but um, it hasn't been talked about yet unless I, I decided to make the John Madden cruiser uh, and, <laughs> and do it that way. But uh, yeah, not, not too sure. And, and by the way, speaking of, before we go to break here real quick, good friend of yeah. mine, Brandon Lee Gowton, who just had it. And, and this is how tough the environment is has done a phenomenal job since the age of 21, now in his um, late 30s, early 40s. A super fantastic job with Bleeding Green Nation. And this goes to show you how cutthroat the industry is. He's had the best writers and the best people work for him and just learned yesterday that he may be shutting down his operation. And he's covered the Eagles for a long time, still will, wow. but had got rid of his, his crew. And it was a crew of about six or seven. And, and just a phenomenal job that he's done year after year after year. And now he may fold because it's just getting so tough out here. Crazy. And that's why we have this uh, unbelievable platform here at Riptide Media Network, uh, Pete Shepard Show. And we're going to have a big announcement either later today or Monday with all the shows and everything else and new web page and new app and everything. But the video streaming is what's really important to us. Uh, let's face it, it is. We got a ton of uh, listeners and a ton of mentions and all that stuff, which is great. You can follow me at Twitter, uh, at Twitter X at PSHEP326. Facebook page, mine, not only mine, but Broad Street South, Angel Martinez Facebook page. You can find the show and on uh, the uh, Broad Street South YouTube page uh, as well. Going to take another uh, quick break here, Angel. And then when I come back, uh, it'll be John Ryder joining me, Sports Center. <laughs> Sports Center update guy extraordinaire from ESPN Radio joins me next. Here's the Pete Shepard Show continues in hour number three. Oh, what a night. Late December back in 63. What a very special time for me. As I remember what a night. Oh, what a night.
right back here. It's hour number three of the Pete Shepard Show here live from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide Media Network. How is everybody doing today on this Friday? It is April 5th. It is final four weekend for the ladies first, as always, and then the men coming up Friday and Saturday. And joining me, first time we have spoken in quite some time, John Ryder, Sports Center update guy on ESPN Radio and God only knows what else he's been doing, staying out of trouble. Uh, John Ryder, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, Pete. Great to hear your voice. Great to, great to hear your voice. You're used to, you're st- obviously, you're still living in New England. I wanted to know, because you know Patrick Gilroy, our friend. He was supposed to join me. He's really having a hard time up in New Hampshire with the snow and the wet snow and all that stuff. So I didn't know wherever you are in New England, how bad did you get it? Not, a bad, not bad at all, Pete. Uh, you know, a lot of rain, basement flooded. Uh, oh. so, 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 you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, nothing like uh, he's dealing with, I guess. Wow. Well, and I was always, you know, I wanted to reach out to you a couple times, and a couple times, you know, I hear you uh, sometimes when I'm driving in. Uh, one of the local stations around here doing, you know, between you and, and Kevin Winter and Doug Brown, all New England guys. So proud of all you guys. And right. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. So uh, you do, you do, you do a great job over there, but I know you do a lot of overnights, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, in fact, this is not my normal, uh, you know, uh, type of hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, typically, um, um, like, um, Sleeping. you know, getting out at, uh, uh, getting out at, uh, like, uh, you know, whatever time and getting home at like, uh, four something five in the morning. So, wow. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, so yeah, so I, I always think people are fascinated behind the scenes. So when you, when you, you most of your ships are overnight. So what time do you, what do you get there? Like 10, eight, 10 o'clock at night or even earlier? to do like a midnight to, to, you know, five, and then you have to wait till all the games are over and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it varies. I mean, you know, a lot of times I'm, it's just like, uh, seven at night I start and then, um, I mean, it depends if I'm doing sports center all night mm-hmm. and then that starts at like, uh, two in the morning and then I'm, you know, going all night. So, um, you know, varies basically yeah all right well big buzz must be a big buzz in bristol i mean obviously they got the you know this is like oh it's it's very it's it's the women's version i think of magic and bird here we we got with Paige beckers and caitlin clark tonight and what a terrific final four then she stayed south carolina and then you know yukon and iowa and of course, the men tomorrow, uh, to, tomorrow, and then she stayed Purdue and Alabama and UConn. But what's the buzz been like over there with this matchup coming up tonight, and really even earlier this week with the Elite Eight matchups? Yeah, Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's is, is incredible, and then uh, Becker's uh, as well. Um, it's just you know phenomenal this matchup with the uh, these women that. You know, they've really uh, promoted the sport well, and um, you know, uh, I, I think that uh, Beckers and Page and like you know the whole thing, South Carolina, you know, the whole phenomenon. I mean, it's definitely like promoted women's sports to the max. There's no doubt about that. How's your uh, brackets looking in the men? <laughs> the men, uh, I, I mean, I mean, you gotta have to say UConn's gonna run it. Oh, no, I meant, I meant your overall bracket. But yeah, I picked UConn to win the whole thing at the, at the start. I had North Carolina, Houston, and Creighton in the final, my final four. But I didn't know. I don't know if you're one of those that uh, you know. Did you have NC State going this far, winning five games in five days, and you know was tied with Louisville in week game one in the ACC tournament? Had to put a forty footer up to tie Virginia in another game, but. Here they are in the final four. That, yeah. that 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 you know a team that many people didn't even think was going to make it, make the tournament. But it always happens. It's always ha- It happens. Not always, but it happens a lot. Where that one of those last no, it teams, happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> go ahead. I mean, really. Let's face it. Happens all the time. I mean, but NC State. No, I did not. If I was doing my brackets or whatever, uh, but um, NC State. Uh, what a story that is. I mean, they wouldn't even have been there if it wasn't if they didn't win the tournament. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
And how about DJ Burns? A uh, story came out. He's made over $100,000 in nil deals the last three weeks with Adidas, Barstool Sports, CVS Pharmacy, DAPS, Manscaped, and Raising Canes and Intuit uh, TurboTax. Nothing like Manscaped, you know? TurboTax. <laughs> <laughs> TurboTax, Manscaped. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes. Yeah, you know, whatever it takes. Hey, no, 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 that's, that's tremendous. I mean, that, that is great stuff. I mean, uh, what a phenomenon he has been. And, uh, I mean, you've got NBA players talking about him, Jokic, uh, you know, mentioning him all the time. Um, uh, NFL won. NFL. I, mean, people I, I think, think it ends. Unfortunately, I think it ends right now for NC State. But, I mean, what a great story. No, there's, there's no question. Uh, uh, but they'll take on Purdue in the first game. Purdue's a nine and a half point favorite, six oh nine on 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 TBS. But DJ Burn, I mean, he's, there are people that want him to go play in the NFL because he's so um, nimble for his size. Yeah, right. I can yeah. understand that. Yeah, tight end. John Ryder joining me. It is he's a sports center anchor on uh, ESPN Radio. How long have you been there? Now, I, I told people back in the day that I was in charge of update guys way back in the mid nineties when well, the I got going and uh I you were you you were like me the day I hired you when I got hired there like about a year and a half earlier I, I was the same way. That was but that was that was something. You made it you and John no, Rich you know what, Pete <laughs> you, you were the one that helped me out the most. I mean uh you know you were the one that uh basically hired me. Yeah, I told Jason Wolf about you because I don't think he had gotten your tape, or if he did, I think all the tapes came to me at the other office. And uh, I remember, you know, yours was outstanding, and so was, uh, you know, John Rich. And I don't know what he's doing now, but uh, I think he got out of the business. But, but I'm glad I'm, you, you prospered. You went from Boston, and then you, I think you, you went right to ESPN Radio, right? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a crazy uh, deal. I mean, it was. Uh... I was there with, um, you know, doing the Red Sox stuff, and then I got cut loose, and then uh, ESPN picked me up, and then I went back to EI for a little while, and then, then uh, um, <laughs> back to ESPN. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like, a, you know, yeah. Uh, my good friend Angel Martinez is uh, is on the show with me as well. Angel, you have something you want to ask, John? Yeah, John, uh, thanks for getting Nothing. up early because I know it's kind of tough you. with the uh, – Oh, hang on a second. My bad. My bad, Angel. My bad, Angel. Go ahead. All right. John, thanks yeah. for, uh, for for getting up earlier than you probably normally do. But what was the <laughs> – to me, because you know every shift is completely different, but what was the hardest transition when you had to go into the overnight? Uh, <laughs> overnight. Uh, <laughs> Sleep <scared. I> have, <laughs> Yeah, it really is body clock. Uh, yeah. You know, um, um, you know, Sports Center all night. When I do that, uh, so Sports Center all night is two a.m. It starts, and, and then I'm out of there at like five in the morning. Um, so, you know. Sometimes uh, a little bit frazzled when I'm doing, you know, like some of these type of shifts or whatever, uh, you know, limited sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. I probably sound, I sound like a wacko right now. I mean, I, <laughs> no, no, you sound like uh, you sound like Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High after he fell out of the van. But other than no, I'm just teasing. I know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, originally, I mean, let's let's make this a little more funny. Yeah. I mean, I texted Pete. I was supposed to. Uh, <laughs> Do a show early, this <laughs> and I said I didn't mean to be John Paul in the Seinfeld. Why? Why separate uh, knob? You know, why separate knob? Why separate knob? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> what, what was it? The uh, no, it wasn't the AM PM or the, the, the uh, no, yes, no, it wasn't the AM PM man, and, and no, it wasn't the music. Yeah, no, <laughs> separate knob. By, by the way, he, <laughs> I, I, he, you know, other than the final four. Uh, I'd love to hear Pete's uh, favorite Seinfeld episodes, at least top uh, two. Uh, 
Uh, I, I'll tell you, they're, they're, it's hard. Everybody likes, you know, Super Nazis. It's everybody's favorite. I, I'll tell you one that I really, really love, and it was in season nine. I love the Merv Griffin episode when they take all the. Merv Griffin. That was no, no doubt about it. That's one of the best. That, that, that is one of the best ones. I mean, everybody goes with, you know, the contests and, you know, Super Nazi and all that. I love the Marble Rye one. And uh, yeah. I, I also love the one where George becomes a hand model. You know, when he, goes, yeah, yeah. he has to move back home and the parents always pick her uh, up. He, just, he just, just, just looks up and goes, oh, my God. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I'll give you two. The the, the Joe Mayo fur coat, uh, Silvio. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> looks like a bit of a dandy. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, that that is definitely one of them. Um, and then uh, Lloyd Braun in the Alex Theater. Oh, uh, that, oh, with the with the chew, chewing gum. Uh, so I was chewing gum. Chewing with gum. Yeah. Lloyd <laughs> Braun. <laughs> and, and, and George uh, thinking that the woman and the horse is ripping him off. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Ruthie, Ruthie. I know you got my money, Ruthie. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to step dollar fire. bills and lipstick yeah. on them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, John. All right, John. This was great catching up with you. Good, good stuff. And you know, so when's when's your next? Yeah, no. when's your next shift? Hopefully, I gave you. A, uh, I, I wish I gave you a little more info. Maybe the time post stuff was a little bit better, but I mean, uh, <laughs> when when's your next uh, shift? And you know, are you going to be busy this weekend with uh, you know all the. Um, Oh, yeah, it's Saturday. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in there Saturday. Okay. Well, for I'm, updates, uh, and then, uh, and then there's sports centers and games and whatever. I don't know. Alrighty. But, uh, but it's so good hearing your voice, Pete. <laughs> Pete's a legendary. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best. Well, you're gonna be legendary Boston. after this interview. I can tell you that. But trust me. But <laughs> why? Why? I'm, I'm on like kidding. I'm only fucking. Kidding. Uh, I'm, only well, I'm on like two hours sleep. I know. And, uh, you know. I know. I'm, no, I'm glad. No separate knob. I'm glad you made. It. In fact, you called in early. I'm, I'm no. Honestly, we'll do this again, John. When nah. someday when you're not um, on two hours of sleep. But no, there's a lot of good stuff. People yeah, like to yeah. hear, people well, like to hear the behind the scenes stuff of what goes on in Bristol. Well, yeah, you too. I, I actually heard you on Felgren Maz. Yeah, uh, yeah, a few weeks the, ago. yeah, I was. I was, I was at the was Super Bowl. Excited. Yeah, yeah, I was at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I was excited. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, the legendary Pete Shepard. Yeah. Uh, I mean. uh, again, the second time today I'll say this, in the words of George Costanza, I think it moved. Is that how you felt? <laughs> yeah, I, I always do. I always do. When it's, when it's with you, uh, there's, there's no question about it. <laughs> All right, John, you're the best. Uh, continued success over yeah. there. And, uh, you know, kick Strewski and, and two Nesson guys. Kick him out of the booth on ESPN. You can go yeah. do that stuff, too. Yeah, I will. I will. I, I will. I got to I got to. Do some Kirby enthusiasm, uh, some sort of Seinfeld act on them or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Such okay. a great series. <laughs> all right, my friend. All the best, John. Appreciate you. All right, man. Take care. All the best to you. Thank all you right, later. Much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you he wasn't stoned. No, he's, I know. He's going on. He's got, I didn't realize he was going on. He's going on like two hours sleep. It's but. tough. It's what well, you, you know. You feel bad because it, it is. No, tough. I don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't just, feel bad. <laughs> but that, that depends. Well, because some people like for me, I, I'm used to between two to three hours worth of sleep, so I'm I'm good to go as soon as I put my head down. Once I'm up, I'm up and up, you know, up and running. But yeah, it's when you're, it, especially if you were you were going to bed and you knew you had something to, to get up for and try and sound enthusiastic. It's a, it's. It, sometimes it is tough, but and we, you know, either way, he made the call. It was still a good time. Oh yeah, no, it's always a, it's always a good time. It's, it's funny because he he's so low key anyway. I mean, he's very, you know, and he has a very distinguished voice and everything. But you could you could tell he has been uh, sleep deprived. There's no question about it. But all yeah. all all good stuff. But I wasn't kidding earlier. DJ Burns uh, Angel. Um, might be playing in the NFL next year over the NBA if he doesn't go overseas. Uh, $100,000 in nil deal just the last three weeks with Adidas, CVS, Barstool, Daps. What's Daps? So I know what Daps is. Manscaped, Raising Canes, and Intuit TurboTax. Or Intuit. Uh, Manscaped. Okay. All right. Well, 
I guess you know it's funny because Manscaped normally when if if people try to reach out to them for sponsors, they always give you the line that uh, well you can become an affiliate and you'll get ten to twenty percent off anything you end up purchasing. But okay, so that doesn't pay the bills. But all right, all right. so I promote you for two years, and then at the end of the two year deal, then you you end up cutting me off. But okay, I got it. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's speaking from experience. Have you tried to get a sponsorship? Yeah, yeah. When you oh. try to get it, what they do is they 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 tell you that well, you can join our affiliate program. And so the affiliate program, what it goes, and you have to put all your social medias, everything in there. So for two years, you're basically giving them free publicity. In the end of two years, they basically tell you, "Thanks for playing, but we're going to go ahead and move on in a different direction." Oh my God! Yeah, that's well, you know, in, in some ways, I'm not surprised. So, he might, what do you think he did? Because he's just hot right now. I don't mean sexually. I mean hot, uh, right. hot commodity right now. That they probably paid him a whole bunch of money. They, then they must be much better off than what they were originally, and they finally figure out that you can't just keep going off this whole affiliate sponsor thing. So, I'm assuming they, they figured in, in order to keep getting themselves bigger and bigger, like we've seen other companies do, they got to start somewhere. So maybe this is their their first little opening to maybe bigger things. But because Manscaped, and we've seen the commercials, but it's not they're making good money, but it's not like they're they're out by gangbusters. So I'm pretty sure it was something that they decided to put together and just throw out there and, and see if it's stuck. And so far it has, you know, no pun intended, but um, <laughs> you know, it, I'm pretty sure if, if they continue getting bigger like everybody else, then they'll probably ante up from that point forward. Um, I got a story here before we go to break, and you're going to love this. 33 supposedly brilliant ideas that just didn't have legs. Speaking of marketing, that just quite didn't make it. Here's my fr- here's one. Um, I want to skip that one. That's even no. All right, coming in at number thirty-two. Amazon's life-threatening home security. Homeowners can check in on their homes from anywhere, and uh, and with the Amazon Ring, so can everyone else. Hackers have spied on people, spoken racial slurs through the mic, and even told an old lady, "Tonight you die." Dozens of terrified users sued Amazon. Now, in a similar story, I experienced something like that. Did I ever tell you the story about my Xbox? No. Xbox 360 when it came out, not the first Xbox. Right. By the way, is there anything worse in life than the red the red, the red ring, ring on Xbox? Yep. Can't fix Horrible. it. Nope. Horrible. $400 down the drain, just yep. like that. Usually after a few months. But I got Xbox 360 and that's the one that had the little the 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 bar. Yeah. That would have the camera on it and the microphone on it if you so choose or cho- it had a camera on it. And this was right before you could get on. I think you could get on video if you were in the right setting and all that stuff. But I used to mute the mic, turn the bar around because so many people, as you just said, could hack in. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing Madden one night. This is like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And in the span of four days, Angel, I heard a, a crack deal go down in a home wherever it was. Uh, I was playing somebody online. I was playing somebody online. Uh, I heard a crack deal go down and then a major sexual encounter that happened. Obviously he's looking at the TV. She's facing him. You can only imagine the position and he's yelling and screaming at the game that I'm playing with him and I'm dying and he can't hear me and I can't see him, (laughs) but I know they're having sex because she's moaning and groaning and and he's bopping and weaving and I can hear him moving, like trying to get his head around so you can see the TV. Right. And it was absolutely hysterical. So I know what was better, the sex the, the sex story during uh, Madden or the, the drug deal uh, that went down. <laughs> it was absolutely hysterical. Well, you figure, right? <clears throat> one of the companies early on, and I'm not too sure if it's ADT, but one of the security companies early on had the same issue, but it, it wasn't because people were hacking in. It was the people that were working inside. They were peeping into other people's cameras yeah, and so there were uh, the the only way it got exposed was there was a uh, there was a person walking around the house and and non clothed, and apparently the comment was, uh, "Hey, it's a little bit uh, a little cold outside. Don't you think you might want to put something on before you walk out?" And <laughs> at first, the the person thought that their loved one was home making a comment, and so oh, they, they walked God. from the kitchen to the living room and noticed, like, "Wait a minute, nothing changed here." And obviously, the one who had said something over the speaker realized it and then the security company calls like two minutes later saying uh hey by the way like that was just me you know, i apologize whatever and and it became a, a a major major thing but that's why i refuse and and i've been in telecom for many years 
Mm-hmm. I refuse to have the internal cameras inside the house for I that agree. simple reason. Because uh, what do I want the world for to see me, whatever I'm doing in my own household? I agree. And the doorbell thing, too, the doorbell cam, I don't have that either. I refuse. Nope, either. I, I refuse. Um, so people swear by it. I'm like, look, man, if you're going to come to my house and rob me, you better bring a U-Haul truck. Because, what you know, in a gated community I live in with neighbors so close and everything else, I mean, what, what are you going to take? A couch? There's no cash in the house. Nobody keeps cash in the house anymore. Yeah, but they can't get uh, in your on house the whole, I mean, but, 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 but you know, but I think a lot of people in gated communities, you leave the door, but not overnight. But I mean, but I mean, what, what are you going to take? The dining room table? We're going to try to get the TV, the main, you know, 70 inch TV off the, I mean, what are you going to, what are you going to do? But the problem is though, uh, Pete, they have to find the speakeasy door so they can get into your house because they don't know what a speakeasy door is. (laughs) (laughs) Well, again, more uh, bright, uh, brilliant ideas that went awry. How about this? Facebook speaking that Facebook's 24 seven spy machine. After a 50 million user data breach, Facebook released Portal, a video calling device with a camera and mic that were always on, labeled the worst tech device of the year. People distrusted Facebook's camera microphone combo in their home, and it flopped. Of course it flopped. But he just said said the same thing. He just for the same thing. Right. Zuckerberg sells everything. He doesn't care. He sold everything to the freaking government. So what do you guys expect? <laughs> Holy smoly. How about that? this? How about this one? Google's steampunk ass internet balloon. So going literally above and beyond cell towers, Alphabet, Google's parent company, tried to give affordable internet on planet Earth with internet emitting balloons. Many countries denied them for airspace security reasons. They lost one billion and then and, and popped them all. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> Just tell the people in Venice, I swear. Oh. Uh, incendiary baby monitors. Lorex's baby monitor had motion tracking, night vision, and an ability to snap pictures. All that tech cramming caused 488 reports of burn temperature, overheating, and cases of the battery pack expanding enough for the outer casing to shoot right off. <laughs> Jeez, please. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, well, they also had one. years ago, if you remember too, they, so um, it's the CIA, the CIA and U.S. Marshals. So they get the binoculars because obviously they're out in the field a lot. I don't, I'm not too sure if they still use them. I'm, um, I'm almost certain to this day. But they had sold, I forgot what company it was. It was there was a shipment of 500 that was supposed to go to the CIA. Somehow or another, now the same company made it for the public as well, for guys who love to go hunting. Yeah. So they, you know, they sold it to, to these stores. And again, it, the only reason why it came across was because there was a <laughs> husband who took a liking to apparently a particular place. And his wife kept saying, like, what is it with you? Like, all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're really into this place. He was like, ah, oh, you know, it's just, it, it's great people watching this, that, and the other. Well, he put the binoculars down. The wife decided to pick up on him. And when oh. she picked up, you could see through the people's clothing, only come to find out it was these were the binoculars that was to go to the CIA because they had the infrared and, and other oh, stuff that makes you go my see through God. stuff. Oh, my God. That's a cool device. Yeah. It was All uh, right. like 40 bucks. A couple more here before we go to break, and then Henny Capper, Gabe, and Rancher are going to join me. Uh, hackable pacemakers that tug on your heartstrings. These are brilliant ideas that went awry. The revolutionary radio control pacemaker was built without security against other frequencies. The possibility of hacking caused a recall of 500,000 after patients feared anyone with a wireless transmitter kit could play with their hearts. That is sick. <laughs> Good Lord. Jesus Christ. That's unbelievable. Um, Hypnomagic. Um, Hypnomagic was an attempt to literally hypnotize audiences introduced in the 1960s to hypnotic eye. Since you haven't gone to hypnosis movie ever, you'll already know that it failed. And it's posted it says spellbound. You gaze into the depths of evil as beauty is hypnotized into a thing of torture and terror. The fate of those who dare to stare at the eye. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, God, oh my God. Come on. How about the invention of smell o vision? In 1960, yeah. Mike Todd Jr. figured that releasing scents in sync to the action on the screen would improve scenes set in restaurants, perfume shops, and such. Needless to say, the gimmick stunk. I don't know how the hell you would do that, but fascinating stuff. Uh, 20th Century Fox's co founder didn't see television as a competition. 
Daryl F. Zanuck in 1946 said television won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after the first six months. People will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every single night. Not. No. Yeah. How did that work out for him? (laughs) No, absolutely. Absolutely not. All right, Angel, going to take another quick break here on the uh, Pete Shepard show. segment here is we're live from the naples wealth planning studio on the riptide media network outstanding angel martinez is also in the house with me gabe morenci uh from sports uh, sports rage and sports grid is going to join me in just a couple of minutes here as we're going to break down uh, all things march madness for the men and the women you might have a couple of baseball but, oops, excuse me but a couple of baseball tips for me as well see angel i was eating uh, a little piece of my um uh, Robert Irvine, who I love as a chef and person, another ex-military guy, uh, Robert Irvine's uh, Fit Crunch. Lots of protein. 
It is. 16 grams of protein, only 3 grams of sugar. Great stuff. Did I mess the camera up? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, as Joey just said there, uh, two things. One's, one, we made it to Friday, fellas. Keep up the great work. Good morning. And then he says, Pete Shepard's pocket door and motion director camera. Next <laughs> level. Yeah, it's, it's we've named it. I've named it R2 uh, follow, you, follow You. R2 Follow You is the name of the camera. And yes, uh, usually it does. And I could go all the way around the room or pretty close all the way around the room and it would uh, it would still follow me. So anyway, Angel, what you got coming up this weekend? Anything good besides besides watching some sports? Uh, yeah, well, obviously sports night tonight, sports weekend, because uh, the NCAA finals are almost here. The final four is definitely here, and then we'll get into the finals. But uh, this weekend, other than <clears throat> more work to get things lined up here for both <laughs> networks over the weekend, uh, we're going to try and hit the beach, actually. Nice. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe Saturday, because uh, it's it'll be warm enough, it'll be bright enough, it'll be blue enough around here, thank God. Um, so, yeah, we're probably going to end up doing a beach on Saturday, and, and God knows whatever else we're, we're actually... Tonight we may end up catching a sunset as well. So Oh, you and the uh, dynamic Deb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she told me to tell she told me to call her that. Oh, that's good. That, I'm kidding. Good because uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the funny part is of course she's always gotten the Debbie Does Dallas because it's for those who oh, don't know it's many, many years ago. Yeah. So but, whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. Beep, beep. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she said it's it's you know it it hasn't happened in a while, but yes, that was one of those things that was to, just because again the, the those that don't know I, I'm not even going to say it because we'll probably get uh, fined even though we can't get fined, but uh, yeah, it's just it's stuff from way way back in the day that uh it, you just do the research and you'll figure it out. Okay, interesting. And it's had kinky. Uh, that's that's great. <laughs> it's good she has a good sense of humor like that, which she does. Oh yeah, she she has she has, she has a wonderful laugh. Yeah, she does. She has a really, really fun, uh, a really, really nice laugh. Uh, NIT last night, Seton Hall finishes the game on a 9 nothing run. Indiana stayed up by seven, then started jacking up threes, Angel, left and right. It was unbelievable. And I know a lot of people got hosed on that one, uh, including me. And I wanted Seton Hall to win, but I was, you know, I go with my head over my heart. I had, I had Seton Hall. Uh, I had uh, Indiana State minus three. I thought it was looking good. I knew it would be a close game right down to the wire. But to go to give up the last nine points in two and a half minutes and just shoot, they, they, they just shot threes. They just shot threes. And in the end, I didn't want – I mean, the only thing I needed was a game to, go to, to tie, but it wasn't going to happen. So when Indiana uh, State shot three threes in the last, like, 30 seconds, two of them got blocked. The uh, I was like rooting for Seton Hall at that point. I'm just like, just win, just win. Yeah. So two teams that absolutely should have been in the NCAA tournament, but Seton Hall uh, wins the NIT first time since 1953. Yeah. Of that. Speaking of, uh, it, when I'm 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 almost surprised it wasn't a whole lot more talk. But when you had Clay Thompson in the beginning of the week, uh, who did the uh, got the record for one the most three points in one game. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It did. All right, all right. Joining me right now, my final guest of the day, it is Gabriel Morenci, one of the best handicappers in the country, one of the funnest guys I know uh, joining me here on the uh, Pete Shepard Show. Angel Martinez is hanging out with me today, too, Gabe, uh, from Sports Grid, ESPN, Sirius XM 159, 1090, the mightier YouTube TV. Your freaking resume is longer than it's, it's unbelievable, but you awesome show. I'm so glad to get to watch it a lot at night, at least on my YouTube TV, Sports Grid. One of the uh, one of the great guys in the business, Gabe Morenci. What's up, my man? How are you? Hey, always a pleasure, Pete. How you doing this morning? I am doing uh, fantastic. So, uh, I don't think I've been this. Ja Let me ask you this: J um, Overall, I'll say the last few years, how often do you bet on women's basketball? Not prop bets, but just the lines. How often do you bet on women's basketball? I've been betting on women's basketball for years. I've been betting on the WNBA for, for a long time. Um, as far as women's college basketball, you know, like a lot of people, it was sort of bet because we're degenerate betters, right, in, in a sense. I'm not the perfect person to ask because I bet on everything. But, I'm all, you know, like I've been betting on women's college basketball, I don't know, for like, you know, 20 years type thing, you know, yeah. 15, 20 years. But... I'm not going to pretend that I was, I've was. i been a diehard for the last 15 or 20 years or anything like that. I will say I've bet on women's sports 
more than a lot of people have over the years. Like, I don't, and you know me, like, I don't, a lot of people, like, a good example is the United Football League is back right now, right? Uh -huh. So last week, five games, uh, there were four games, but I had five picks, and I won four. I know a lot of people don't play it. I could tell them, oh, yeah, you know what? I went 36 and 17 last year in the UFL, USFL or whatever. They won't play it because they just don't, right? So I've always been a little bit different like that. Like, yeah. you know, to me, it doesn't matter if it's the Women's World Cup or the Men's World Cup. But, you know, as I tweeted last week, there's a big difference in between going, well, you know what, I'm going to bet on this NC State Women's College game because I'm a degenerate gambler and I would bet on dog racing right now if I had to. <laughs> and actually being looking forward to the games, talking about the games, playing player props, breaking it down. And, you know, the women's game has really come on. You know, you're a big hockey guy. The, the PWHL man has been very successful this year. We've had a great time betting on that. And, you know, we actually watch it. The quality of play has been good. But, you know, I'd be lying to you if I told you I was <laughs> this in and I knew this much about women's college basketball. Put it this way, last week, uh, two weeks ago, they actually cut into one of the, um, the Baylor games. So somebody was getting mm -hmm. smashed. And they came in in between during commercial break. They said, listen, you want to watch a competitive game? The uh, LSU women are playing right now in a close one. Right? <laughs> so we never look at the ratings, 12 and a half million. Yeah. And look at tonight. I imagine tonight will be, I know it was, you know, the rematch, but no reason why tonight doesn't get into the double digits, uh, into the millions as well. Oh, I mean, it's just, this is, you know, it's not quite a bird magic, but, man, it doesn't get any better than Caitlin Clark versus a Paige Beckers in, in that one. I'm leaning toward UConn. I really am plus the two-and-a-half, Gabe. And something about going against Gino, Gino Auriem, I, I can't do it. I'm not I'm not trying to be a New England homer here. or I always go I head over heart. I had, I had Indiana State last night. I wanted Seton Hall to kind of win it, but I wanted to win my bet. And uh, then they just started hucking up threes at the end of the game after, you know, being favored by three and a half. But we digress. But uh, what are you looking forward to? What are you looking at in this game tonight? UConn plus two and a half, or are you going the other side? Well, one thing about Iowa that we do know, and, you know, it was, it was a tough game the other night against Dallas. You going into it, there was so much hype. And I said, listen, you can make an argument for, for either team, but let's just bet the over. Right? I said, yeah. So let, let's attack the over. And, and we were right about that. This is even trickier in the sense, we knew LSU were going to run with, uh, with Iowa, right? LSU had beaten them before playing a high scoring mm -hmm. game, hung a hundred on them and figured, you know, we can do this again. Evidently they, they couldn't, they didn't, they just didn't have that score and they weren't the same team uh, this year. And they had a target on their back. You know what? It's, it's always harder defending a championship, but, and I have a ton of respect for Gino. Well, obviously the legend uh, that he is, I think they'll come up with a, I was going to say a better game plan than stopping Caitlin Clark, but it was amazing. Kim Mulkey was more concerned yeah. about the so-called hit pieces than she was actually yeah. like, so, you know what, maybe we should come up with something. Yeah. Too maybe we should come coaching. up with something to stop Caitlin. Yeah. No so, no so she did, she got out coach, which is, which is kind of a surprise mm -hmm. that you would, you know, you expect of the lack of X and O's and adjustments that were made. It's easy to blame Haley Van Lith, but it wasn't her fault. No. But, you know, she can become the internet target. But with all that being stated, I want more than just Caitlin Clark. And I, don't, I think we've all been guilty of not giving the other girls on the team credit enough. And let's look back on this, man. They made it to the title game last year, Pete. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Like, absolutely. You know, and we're talking about a team that's they're nine and one straight up in their last 10 NCAA tournament games. And it's, it's pretty special because you look at these other teams and most of them have like big time WNBA picks. You know what I'm saying? Like Angel Reese, a big time WNBA pick, uh, you know, Flaugie Johnson's going to be a star. You know, Van Lith is a, is a stud star already as well. She's getting picked girl, on now. The girl moral girls. What about the girl at USC? They say she's going to be the best out of all Juju of them. Juju Watkins. Juju, yes. Yes. Yeah, Juju Watkins. Mm -hmm. So you have all these players that are kind of superstars. I were not, bro. You have Gabby Marshall, the point guard, is going to be like a doctor after. Uh, Kate Martin, same thing. I don't know, like science and blah, blah. Like, they're actually like real student athletes that are playing their hearts out for this. They're not worried about NILs and, and WNBA stuff. I'm actually going to take Iowa tonight against UConn. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive Paige Beckers fan. Yep. I just think it's Caitlin, and, and it's not Paige's time just yet. It'll be her showcase here next year. 
So I think you, I think that Iowa are going to get it done tonight. I think the UConn are going to slow it down a little bit. I don't think UConn want to get into a track meet with Iowa. And I think they'll be better at sort of setting the agenda than LSU were at it. But at the same point in time, guys, it's impossible to bet an under of an Iowa women's basketball game. So it's over past. But I actually do think Iowa are going to get it done. They're deeper. UConn, let's not get crazy with UConn here. Everyone was down. And UConn was sort of like in Zaga in a way, in the men's side where Everyone were kind of down on them. All oh, the Big East sucks on the women's side. They're not the same UConn team. They don't have as much talent anymore. They don't have as much depth. And and now here they are. And, oh, everyone's talking about like they're the UConn power again. UConn are going to have a hard time keeping up if they get into a track meet. Uh, Paige Beckers can only do so much. Aliyah Edwards, the second best player on UConn, she can only do so much. She's going to give you 14 or 15 or something like that. Right, so they're not a great offensive team, UConn. So I think it's an advantage Iowa there. So I'm going to play Iowa, uh, Pete, on the money line. We're going to play the over. And I'll tell you what: in this other game, I know this from experience. Talking about this ain't my first dance with these girls. <laughs> <laughs> South Carolina, they don't pull everybody out all the time, Pete. No, they don't. Like they've had some, they've had some tough games, man. Like even look, going back to the SEC conference championship game, man, where Cardoso had to hit that three at the buzzer. Right, like, and right. you know, it was, it was a miracle free bank. It was a close game against uh, Indiana. They've had a few, even the last one, guys, against the Beavers. The last games they played, they won by twelve. Like yeah. they, you know, so people talk, oh, South Carolina or this next level. Yeah, they don't lose, but they don't smoke everybody either. So I'm just warning people tonight. If you're not fully immersed in this, thinking, oh, these girls are 35 and oh, I hear they're great and they're going to kill this team. No, not necessarily. They play kind of closer games. So I do think South Carolina survive. They're going to win a game tonight. I like the overall 139 and a half. I think they, you know, it's, if you look at South Carolina, it's one thing that they are good at. They're mm-hmm. consistent in scoring. Right? They, you know, these girls wake up and put 78 on the board for breakfast. <laughs> so look for South Carolina to get to about 80. What can NC State do to hang around and cover the number? I think it'll be close to it, but let's go over to 139 and a half. So as you can see, yeah, we're ready for the woman's side. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, again, my man, Angel Martinez, is sitting in with me today here on the uh, Riptide Media Network. He's got a question for it, if you don't mind. Yeah, <clears throat> Gabe, because you already brought it up. I, I want to play something. I'm, I'm pretty sure if those <laughs> haven't heard it, and you should be able to hear this. I, I, I want to play this before the question. Wrap this week up in yep. the only way that we know how. Amen. This has been one of the only segments that has remained a constant throughout all of our Super Bowl radio row shows. This man's the face of sports grid, face of sports rage. Boy. A damn good gambler. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Gabe Morancy. <laughs> Wake up, Gabe. Oh, Gabe. Oh, Let's go, Gabe. Let's go, Gabe. Let's go, Gabe. Let's go, Gabe. Drink it in. Drink it in. What is up, brother? Yes, Gabe. Yes, Gabe. See you, Gabe. See you, brother. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Best jacket yet. Is it? Well, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Come on. Nice year. Oh, no, uh, nice. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good it's one. Good one. It's I don't know, nice. brother. Good to see you, Gabe. Oh, How are you doing, brother? This is for you. The head looks fantastic. The jacket is shining. Gabe Morenci live. Lights going nuts. Yeah. I think it's the other way, the other way. You on TV a couple hours ago. Yeah, we were watching you uh, last night at the house. Yeah. Super Bowl, Las Vegas. Yes. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. Let's wrap this week up in yeah, the only way that we know how. Amen. This has been one of the only. Pause that for a second. But the great yeah. signature yeah. line, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, great, great stuff, Gabe. And you, you were, you were like a WWE guy coming into a fight. It was fantastic. But yeah. Let's get, let, let's get to let's get to the, let's get to the men's um, again. NC State. It was a good memory. You know, we just quick quick thing about that. The coolest thing. Listen, it's obviously cool. McAfee's a badass. The show's super popular and stuff. So it's cool being on it. But the cool thing was just my timing. <laughs> and it's funny, as much as much as I love Pat and being on the show and stuff, I was I was supposed to be on like an hour earlier. Uh-huh. Right? And you know, he's so big now and stuff, it is what it is. So they got a million guests and so I'm sitting back there, there's one after another, like Gene Steratore's on. And he always has people on that I've ripped before that I have to meet. <laughs> so, like, like, man, I've ripped Sterator a fucking lot over the years. Fucking, here it is. I'm like, nice to meet Gene, like I'm sitting in the green room. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, thinking, I'm thinking to myself, man, now I'm more big time. I got to watch what I say about these people, right? So there's Terry Ari there. 
uh, the girl that the broadcast his partner is in a big controversy now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I met her too, uh, Jamie uh, Kerrigan, whatever, Calder, whatever her name is. So I meet all these people, but um, it was just my timing that I wasn't supposed to be on when I was on. And then, boom, the coolest thing ever was I never thought I'd be on a show with Pat McAfee and Dan Patrick at the same time. <laughs> so just to be there for the first time when Dan Patch was on ESPN for the first time, which is like historic. Uh-huh. And I'm just the jackass that happened to be sitting there. It was pretty cool. And all the websites picked up the picture of Dan Patrick. They didn't have a choice because I was in it. <laughs> like Dan was not there without me in the picture. So I got picked up on like every, every motherfucking <laughs> the sports media site out there. <laughs> so I go, Dan Patrick on the Pop McAfee show. And there's this bald guy sitting in the middle between the two. I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> hey, Joey B on our text line says Gabe equals Ric Flair of sports gamblers. Uh, no question about it. Woo. All right, Gabe, let's get into the men's NC state, Purdue, Alabama, UConn. Everybody's, uh, you know, I, I want to see the Edie Klingon master of Klingon. Here's a Klingon. I'm a Star Trek geek. You know that. Uh, Edie Klingon. I mean, I think that's the match everybody wants to see, but, uh, I, I still I don't see I'm laying the 11 and a half with UConn. I'm sorry I can't I'm not uh, I'm not buying into Alabama being able to stop this UConn team. But the NC State Purdue matchup, Purdue's favored by nine and a half. The total is 146 and a half game. What's your analysis of these two games? You know, at this point in time, I think it would be foolhardy to get in front of the North Carolina State Wolfpack basketball team. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, and people I never forget Jay Wright actually brought it up on Selection Sunday. And what she said, you know, guys, I think NC State are going to have a hard time uh, in this tournament. You know, they just won the ACC tournament on Saturday. As a coach, I know it's going to be hard to get them up again. And here we are three weeks later. That's what's so impressive about these guys that they've been able to maintain this. You know, they go back to campus and everybody tells them how great they are. And a lot of times, kids, that's it, right? You know, the the, the bubble is burst and they're not going to be the same team after they let it get to their heads. NC State have been able to absorb this. They've been able to also adapt like a chameleon to their opponents uh, that they played. It's funny, you know, as I talked about sort of the UConn women bandwagon where a couple of weeks ago everyone thought they were terrible, and now, you know, oh, they're the Geno and UConn this. Mm -hmm. And similar situation with Purdue. I mean, it went from being the biggest choking team in America to, oh, isn't this a great story now? So people are just sort of jackass hypocrites, I guess. That's what I'm, I hate people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> There's but a lot of those out there, stated, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But without being stated, I, listen, I know Purdue are good. I know Zach Eady is great. But there's a lot of teams that have the size in North Carolina. And the fouls to give, so to speak. So we know about the DJ Birds. We know it's going to be a fun matchup. It's funny he's listed at 260 as if. So... You know, at least Burns is a big dude. He's 6'9". He's got some girth. He's not going to get pushed around. Is he going to be, you know, there's only so much he's going to be able to do. He's not going to get pushed around. But uh, Middlebrook, 6'10". Uh, uh, Diara, uh, the, the kid that's been fasting throughout the tournament. Diara. Oh, gosh. He's another, like, 6'10", 6'11", kid. Yep. So they've actually got some length and some size that can deal with Edie a little bit. They're going to make other people on Purdue beat them. I think we're going to have a fun one here. I think Purdue are going to survive. I think the game goes over the number, but I think NC State are going to cover. I keep coming back, and I've been telling people for about 48 hours, and I'm pretty good with these exact score predictions. I keep coming back to the same score here, Pete, like 80 to 74 Purdue, which which would get us over the number yeah. and would, um, would obviously cover for NC State. And as far as UConn, it's the one smart thing that I've done – um, I've been on the UConn bandwagon coming into the tournament, before the tournament. I've got UConn futures. I've been hammering UConn in every game. I've been aware of the, you know, we talked about the last time we spoke. Mm-hmm. We've been riding it. And it's funny, the odds makers have finally sort of said, all right, we're not screwing around. I mean, how can it be nine point favorites, eight nine point favorites against San Diego State? Now they're laying, yeah. you know, 12 and stuff, 11 yeah. off 12. Yeah. So they finally sort of learned their lesson, but. Everybody's been paying attention. We talked about this on the show extensively last night. You know, they're really screwing around with UConn, right? So they fucked them around with their plane first. And everybody got into town on um, on Wednesday. These guys didn't leave till one thirty in the morning. They got in Arizona at 6 a.m. Okay, that stuff happens. You don't want to overreact. But it screwed up their entire day now. It just did. Yeah. So then they get there. They check into their hotel. And they find out that they're staying in these little sort of small single thing uh, have you seen the beds i tweeted them out so 
okay, fine. No, that's the way it goes. Everyone's got this. No, that's not the way it goes. The three other teams, players all have their own suite. Like UConn players are sharing rooms for whatever reason, and it's not UConn's team policy. So it's not like, you know what I mean? So there's a few NFL teams that do share rooms. Yeah. That's their policy. There's only like four or five of them. So yeah. I'm just saying, it's not UConn's basketball team's policy to make kids share a room. For whatever reason, they have like these little sort of single beds and are sharing rooms. I see a picture of DJ Burns posted a picture in his hot tub and his, his, <laughs> his palatial suite in the yeah. same hotel. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck's going on I here? Know, I tell you what, though, all you're doing is pissing it off early. This guy wakes up angry to begin with and looking for a reason to get angry. Mm -hmm. So you want him, you want to upset him? Go ahead. You know what I mean? At Bama are a great team. The NATO's a great coach. It's a lot of points, yes, but I think it's going to get away from them. They don't have any size. Nelson's the only kid that's got any size on that team. UConn are going to eat them up on the glass. And you want to run with UConn? All right, they're going to hang 95 on you. So ultimately, I wouldn't get in front of UConn's way, and I think the game does go over the number. Awesome. Gabe, uh, you are the man, as always. Thanks for getting up early and uh, and uh, sharing your thoughts always. I, I love everything you said. I'm all over it. I am absolutely all over it. The men and women, really looking forward to it. And always a pleasure Let's get it. Uh, talking to you. Let's go get them. Uh, all the best, Gabe. We'll talk soon. And uh, again, I went. I know you're not going to like it, too. Go ahead. Give me the Yankees this morning. The <laughs> Yankees are going to win their home opener. It's a, it's a good spot against the Blue Jays with Strowman. And, and listen, Otani. Went eight games without hitting a home run. He went deep in his last one late in the game. Look for Otani to start going deep this week in Chicago. Keep your eye on the window, but I think that Dodger offense is unbelievable. Otani's going to hit a bunch of home runs this week in a Wrigley. Well, the other thing that screwed me up, I mean, I don't know what to think about the uh, you know the Yankees moving the game on Monday because of the stupid solar eclipse uh, from 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Watch the game get rained out. <laughs> <laughs> what an error when they're moving the game for solar eclipses. That's great. When does that ever happen? It's going to happen, too. <laughs> Dude, the solar eclipse, you and I are old enough. You know, people are going to, it's going to happen. They're going to say, oh, I didn't see it. It was too cloudy. It wasn't in my area. It's like, you get excited about nothing you're going to fucking see, right? <laughs> All right, my man. You are the best. Have a great and safe weekend, and uh, best of luck to you. We'll talk to you soon. Gabe Morenzi from, from Sports Grid. Um, you know, ESPN, Sirius XM 159, 1090, the mightier YouTube TV. He is one of the best angels, one of the absolute uh, one of my favorite people on the planet. So he is. Yeah. He so is. I know you're not a big gambler, but I would let you know. So basically, uh take the over in both games in the men. And uh he likes Iowa and uh he likes Iowa in the over in the in the women's tonight. And NC State looks like this cover against South Carolina uh, in that one. They take the points uh, for the women. So, oh, man, looking forward to it. This was uh, this was quite the show considering everything that happened. Good good stuff again, Angel. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, Joey says, after that game segment, I want to run through my patio screen door. Wow, getting back on during football season. Great energy. Uh, quasi, quasi 12. Angel, you hitching your wagon to Pete over Tony? What a clown. This idiot's operation is never going to make it. Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. How will I get my afternoon nap in knowing that? Well, if only you knew what we knew. But that's okay, Kazi. I'm glad you checked in. Glad you got you able to find us. And uh, keep it coming. And, and, you know, hope you come with some more thoughtful discourse and happy to engage. Doesn't really matter. Right. Um, doesn't really matter. We're doing some great things here. There's a lot of great people that are in Trolling. this building where I am at, and there's a lot of great people like Angel Martinez who are uh, who are coming along here at Riptide uh, Media Network. There's a there's a reason why, and uh, we all know the truth. All of us that are stay are, that are part of this network, and uh, more than likely, you're going to find out the truth too. Uh, there's only one truth, and it's happened it's, it's happened inside this building, and that's all I'm going to say. Regardless of what you may hear on the side, it is lies. And puppycock, Angel. I'm going to bring that word. Cockamamie. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Norby, Norby Williamson just got canned at ESPN after 40 years. Oh, boy. The one they said it was, they weren't done yet over at ESPN. Supposedly. No, they're not. They're, they're not done ever. They're not yeah. done anywhere. They're really, they're not done. They're not done anywhere. So, anyway, Angel, thanks a lot for everything um, as well. For all this, all the stuff you do, behind the scenes stuff, and yesterday we were going back and forth and putting together a couple of minute segments and throwing them on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Really, uh, 
just it just makes the show so much better. So thank you so much for all your help. And You're welcome. We'll continue to look forward to working together. Big announcement coming later today. Probably going to be on Monday. Probably Monday morning when you come on. We'll have uh, some really, really cool stuff to tell you about here on the Pete Shepard Show on the Riptide Media Network. So that is going to do it for me, Angel, and uh, for you. Anyway, you got you got any show coming up tonight or anything like that? No, tonight it will be an off day as Joey B comes in at the last second there. He says, awesome week of show, guys. Enjoy your weekend. You too, Joey B. We appreciate it. But uh, no, no shows tonight because it will be the action pack game night for the women's basketball. Sweet. And we'll be back at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. Again, it's Pete Shepard Show. Thanks, everybody, for listening on all the video platforms. We'll have the app ready to go on Monday. Uh, here, we're live. I am live anyway from the Naples Wealth Planning Studio on the Riptide Media Network. We'll talk Monday at 7 a.m. Have a great and safe weekend, everybody. And enjoy the men and women's final four. See ya. How you was where you could be found. Told them you were living downtown. Driving all the old men crazy. The boys are back in town. 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 You know that chick that used to dance a lot? Every night she'd be on the floor shaking what she'd got. Man, when I tell you she was cool, she was red hot. I mean, she was steaming. And that time over at Johnny's place, well, this chick got up and she slapped Johnny's face. Man, we just fell about the place. If that chick don't want to know, forget her. The boys are back in town. I said. Now that the boys are here again